The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light go. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode 151. One, five, one. one, one, one. I'm Gav, 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 Gav. That's an incredible echo effect you're doing. And I'm Dan, 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 Dan. Brilliant. Can you pan it? Gav, 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 Stop Gav, it. Gav. Stop it. You're giving listeners headaches and we're only 30 <laughs> seconds in to the episode. The migraine on Haunted Hill. Um, welcome, uh, everybody. Hope you're all safe in the world. Everything is happy. You're dandy. Um, if your name's Mandy, you're dandy. And, and if you your name's Dan, like candy. If your name's Dan, then you're dandy too. It's true. How are you? I'm very well, my friend. How are you? Very good. Very good. Um, uh, have, you, have you been doing much? We recorded fairly recently, so we don't have that much to. Uh, no, no. Schmooze. Life's been very, very busy. Um, got a few things in the pipeline um which might talk about it in a few months time but um yeah no uh just very busy uh my wife's um got some extra work now she's been promoted so she's super busy so work 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 children 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 and when i can i try and fit in the odd horror film and then occasionally i talk to my bearded friend gavin mm. do you know him it's recent uh, no yeah i look at him in the mirror and we talk to each other Sexy. Um, recently, uh, yeah, we we did an episode, and I think the next episode isn't too far off in the yonder either. Um, are you well in the world, though? You're happy? You're good? Happy chappies, happy chappies. This, everybody, this is episode 151, and this is, um, as you know, it's our 10th year of podcasting, or if you don't know, I'm telling you now. And what we're doing for the, our 10th year is we are filling in the blanks with any franchises that we want to come back to uh, and try and finish off as well, if we can. Because there's there's quite a few franchises we've started or, or come back to, or, or we're still working through some of the bigger ones. Um, so as well as as director specials for this tenth year, we're also doing franchise revisits. So a year or two ago, we started the Chucky franchise with the first two Child's Play films. So there you go. We are covering no surprise, Child's Play three mm-hmm. from 1991. Yep. Um, and the follow-up seven years later is it seven years wow only seven years 98 yeah uh bride of chucky chucky gets lucky oh yeah doll sex weird um oh, yeah, know, that's about it. At last time we had bob hoskins uh in the shower yeah just gonna soak myself up, soak myself up for a little bit longer than it should be and then this time Chucky's going to be Chucky the fucky, basically. Yeah. Absolutely, Chucky. I'm you know, Chuck. No, he likes to fuck. And what I will say about that scene is I do think that they they took inspiration for that when they made Team America. And then they thought, rather than just show shadows of dolls fucking, let's actually show them. Because obviously in Team America it goes I've crazy. I've seen it. <laughs> oh, it's absolutely crazy sex scenes in there between puppets. Uh, I think I've seen the sex scene because like, someone's like, you got to watch that, though. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. I went, okay, yeah. weird. But yeah, well, so we're covering basically Charles Play 3 and 4 um, this episode. So we'll be talking all about um, Brad Dourif, Jennifer Tilly, who gives me the willy, um, and whatever else we, we think of, really. Uh, I don't mean she gives me the willy as in she creeps me out, as in, as in she's a rather beautiful lady <laughs> but um <laughs> other than that Gav, I literally yeah. I was just literally like here's a shovel just gonna let you uh, dig yourself further and further yeah, into this yeah. Jennifer Tilly hole of your you're slipping oh, into Jennifer Tilly hole 
Wowee. I shouldn't have said that, should I? Any should keywords to do with sex? Oh my god, I've got to really think before I speak then. I will not say this evening, just in case well, you're aroused. Um, and the audience don't want to know about your audible arousal. Well, let, let's talk briefly on a little tangent in, about your other podcast that you do with your beautiful Sarah, mm-hmm. uh, which is The High Strangers. Your last episode was all about uh, caving gone wrong. Oh. And oh my god, I had a field day listening to that because you, you were talking some about the videos. holes, <laughs> you were talking about caving, you were talking about spelunking. Now these are all words when used normally are fine, but one of them was called um, the gaping gill. Gaping gill. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's just brilliant stuff. You it know? was and, as soon as before we started going, it was like this episode is just going to be this, isn't it? Deep and shafts and all this kind of stuff. It was fantastic. So many key- sexual keywords into uh, caving. Uh, if, if you're um, if you're interested, do check it out on High Strangeness Podcast. It's it's a terrifying thing. Would you go down a cave? No, absolutely not. And I'll tell you why. Um, I'm not. I'm a bit, a little bit claustrophobic. Mm. Not like not on a lift or something. But if I suddenly can't move my arms, let's say if I'm tied oh, up, God. and some of those are just like using yeah. their fingers just to sort of push themselves slowly along like a slug. But- but what cemented it for me was watching the descent because yeah. I think Christ, you know, if you die down there, you, you know, it's not just the fact that you're it's stuck not just down dying, there. It's no just a slight injury. A slight injury, yeah. and you can be fucked. Like really yeah. could. Uh, just one bone in your your like main part of your leg or something could just boom, take you out. You're stuck. Yeah. It, I'm not really an extreme sports man, Gavin. Um, in fact, I'm not really a sports man. Uh, uh, anything really no but, I'm not but nowadays I'm an Olympic sportsman aren't I because I go skateboarding yeah indeed it's an Olympic sport which is hilarious I've been doing I've an Olympic heard... sport do you know I've been doing an Olympic sport in my past time for um, since I was what 14 13 I mean I don't know if any of the sports I've ever played have been Olympic 30 odd years I used to play basketball a lot um, I used to play um, badminton a lot I think those might be Olympic <sighs> And I, I want to try... Uh, oh, no, I'm thinking squash. I was talking about that earlier today. Oh, I fancy hiring out a squash court and being like Michael Douglas in Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. And just being a yuppie on the old squash court. That's what I fancy doing. Um, the other sport, uh, the only sport I really stuck at was kickboxing, which, you know, as you know, I I got to black belt level and, um, and quit, <laughs> basically. <laughs> Um, well, it was a combination of... Mic drop, uh, two to quit, two to jit to quit. It was a combination of a few things, really. The uh, I, I, It was leading up to my wedding, so I wasn't able to keep going as often as I wanted at that point. I intend, fully intended to carry on full time, but then not long after, well, just before the wedding, obviously my mum passed away. Then, then the following, beginning of the following year, the COVID thing happened and then and then my kickboxing school closed down during covid so that's my excuse look i got to black but what the fuck more do you want come on i i i'm not arguing or anything i don't you don't I'm have to go defensive myself. on me i know like, I'm, I'm just listening myself. to you so don't I, yeah, I thought I had a ghost pooing uh, next door the other night I, wow. I, I i was just like what the hell the bathroom light came on and the toilet went, and I was just about to get to bed. And I, ha- I, ha- I borrowed my dog, my beans. He came to hang out with me because I missed him. So me and him in bed, and we're about to go to sleep. And I said, the light came on, the light went off, and the toilet flushed. So confusing. Next door, the next day, didn't nothing. Whatever. Then the day after, I said to the guys in the shop, "What's, what's, is someone staying upstairs? Because next door to me now is an Airbnb. Um, so I've got, I'm going to have random people just going to be listening, be able to listen to me recording the podcast, presumably. Um. Mm. Uh, and but I didn't know this at the time, so oh, I was just like, man, the ghosts like is it, would a ghost like just do like the spirit of a ghost just be like, ah, I need a shit. I and goes in, meant- turns the light on, and flush the toilet, and turns the light off again, but like an energy thing. Do you know what I mean? I thought you meant your own bathroom light would come on, and because I would literally no. shit shit myself if my bathroom light came on in the night on and the had to flush. That'd be good, wouldn't it? I'd either think one of the children had decided to skip potty training and move straight to using the toilet in the middle of the night mm. and also able to open a stair gate and unlock their bedroom door. Children at night time. I remember waking up in the middle of the night, just waking up in a Charlie formerly known as Jasmine, uh, would have been Jasmine at the time, bent over the bed staring at me and just, what the fuck? 
the hell? What the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Like, Jesus I remember the, Christ. <laughs> the first time Jack scared me, because Edith hasn't really done it, but when they were they were both in our room in their cots when mm. they were very small, I woke up in the middle of the night and I thought, something feels weird. And I looked down in the cot and Jack was sat up. He was only about, I don't know, six, seven, eight months. And he was sat up just looking up at me. <laughs> And he just looked like Possessed. a little Victorian doll because he was so, so small. And I was like, "What the fuck?" Nice. And I just looked at him, and he didn't. He just obviously couldn't say anything. Speaking of demonic children, do you know the new Omen movies out in April? Yes, I do. Yeah, the first Omen. Okay. Oh, I, I was looking up. Um, <clears throat> Matey it did the um, uh, the Halloween movies. Gordon Green. Dave, yeah. David. David Gordon Green. Yeah. I, I've looked at what he's like what he's up to now. What or going to be doing? It was like nothing's horror. Anything which was horror. Was, Tumbleweeds completely well, gone. Well, people won't go near him now because you know he just wants to. It sounded like a good idea at the time, but mm, mm. no, let's let's not even go but, down so, there. But now this Omen movie's coming out. It's like mm, okay, uh, wait and yeah, see. I'm still I'm still going to check out this Exorcist movie, which has been and gone the cinemas. Um, yeah. I've not heard good things about it, but I'll check it out. You know um, what is good, which is coming, which is Ghosty this month. What's that? Uh, 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 yes. Uh, new yes, Ghostbusters indeed. movie, and I'm going to check it out in the new cinema in Farnham. It looks good. Um, I've uh, seen the newest and last trailer, which shows... That doesn't really show much more, but everybody's in it. But there's still... I've watched somebody um, theorise, because they, they only show the shoulder of somebody in some of the shots. I, and apparently this could be Rick, Rick Moranis' big comeback. There is people are talking about him being in it because they've kept Sigourney Weaver out of the trailers and she's in it uh, but apparently all the original cast have a much bigger role in this that's one that's so cool is not it if Rick Moranis is it, Batman I, I, I am fucking look, all over it I think the thing was of like one of the main components is obviously uh, our World of a, World of a Strange intro, introduction list and uh, he was a bit a bit grumpy at times and um, just Indeed. did stuff here and there and but I, I think possibly doing that last movie you probably didn't watch it and went you know what kind of enjoyed it um, it was uh, Ivan Reitman's son you know it was cathartic for all of the original cast and it was I a think, good so, chance for so, them to honour and say goodbye so to, he to back Harold Spain and the second one it might be like yeah come on I'm like really into it sort of thing because I knew like the first, wasn't it the first Ghostbusters they went oh no it's the original Ghostbusters they didn't even know if Bill Murray could turn up and just woof, Monday morning at 8 o'clock he's just there and they, but they had no idea if he would turn up or not yeah it was like that so it's just you know but um good I'm looking forward to it yeah I, I'm really looking forward to that this year as well um there's a good few movies that are coming out this year that I'm looking forward to. Deadpool 3, as a Marvel fan, I'm looking forward to that as well. Yeah, I know. So that's second um, one. The first one I, I saw once, it, it, it was kind of fun. And I'm looking forward to the, the Nosferatu movie, Edgar's Nosferatu movie as well. Yeah. So there's, there's a few... There's, bits- a, there's a couple of horror movies actually coming out. Um... Uh, there's a few little bits and bobs actually coming out. We get to them as they come, I think. You know. Talking of talking of films then and stuff we've been watching or want to watch. Uh, I've only got one film I wanted to talk about that I've watched in between our last session of recording. Um, what about you? Have you? Is there anything you've been watching? Some London I, I, gangster yeah, films. Yeah, I, I just um, it's just after the episode. I thought actually, you know what? I'm going to do some more Guy Ritchie stuff. Um, I did Snatch and really, really enjoyed doing Snatch. Yeah, um, careful where you're wording that, Gav, because, uh, you know, Snatch is a British... The movie, Snatch. Vulgarity. Yes, thank you. I, uh, I really enjoyed watching. Good. Um, uh, and then watched a little bit of a making of that. Um, then I did a few more Guy Ritchie movies as well, because I was just thought, fuck it, I'm going to do it. And, watched Aladdin, obviously, yeah. Um, well, um, I watched um, Operation Fortune again, and... Again, no, it's a not a good movie. It's it, it frustratingly starts off good with like this is the plan. I need you guys as a team of Jason Statham, uh, <laughs> and this is your mission, and this is what you got to do, and it's quite fun. And then kind of like halfway or so, it just kind of you know, I, I just still haven't kind seen of it. Go, uh, and my brain stops really caring. And if you'd have turned off and been power cut, I'd been like, eh. I, I still haven't seen it. I think. Before you carry on telling us what you've watched, That's I think it. for oh, me, yeah, yeah. No, I think for me, um, Richie is best when it's a smaller cast or you know a story. I know there's a big cast. No, all his costs are fairly. But I, what I mean is, it's got to feel a little bit less budget 
Do you know what I mean? I like, don't know, because Gentleman's a good movie, and that would have been a big budget. Oh, of course. that That's incredible. Uh, Lock, Stock, Snatch, and Gentleman. That's his best movies. Uh, yeah, so I did Rock and Roll agree. as well, and that was just slow and boring. And I've watched it before, and it was like, one of the main guys is an old fella, and it's just, this is just slow and boring, and not interesting, yeah. really, at I, all. I, I've seen that one twice. The second time I watched it, I thought, this isn't that good, actually. And in fact, not... the main guy in it, who was supposed to be a dick, Gerald but I, I... Butler... No, no, the um, the, the actual like the old, rock star. Oh the, yeah, uh, the he's dude, just the really dude, unlikable. The and, dude from Dead Man's Shoes, the younger brother. Yeah, that's right, Toby. Um, Same brother. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I'm still, it's just not a good movie. So unfortunately, I, I kind of wasted my time watching those again. But um, The Gentleman is fantastic, and I have seen that a few times. Uh, funny enough, I was kind of just watching the rest of it just before we got jumped on here. Um, well, that's I think really... Colin Farrell is incredible, isn't it? Yeah, uh, no, he's great. Yeah, I was just watching those. Really, everyone in that movie is really good. And, it's, and, and Guy Ritchie wrote it, then these other mateys came on and have written a couple of his newer movies, and they're not that good. Hmm. Well, we'll see what he does. Um, maybe when he was with Madonna, he just wasn't as inspired. But um, there we well, go. He, in the interview uh, with Snatch, he actually said, um, "I." He went back and watched Snatch again, and he said, um, "I really wish because I, I would have done a third one just there and then." Because he said everything from Snatch was the leftover ideas from Lockstock. Yeah. And he crafted Snatch, and he said, "I had some more ideas. I wanted to do a third one, and it'd been like a trilogy of those movies." Uh, uh, but, but. He was getting, he was getting Madonna doing rude things to him, and he's just probably going, "Yeah, I'm lapsing in luxury and being big and popular and wealth." And he's a material girl. He's just a material girl. Uh, the only material movie I've world. watched, the only, the only film I've watched, uh, was what a brand new one to me. Uh, it's actually a year and a half old now. It came out in 2022. Yeah. And it went, uh, everyone was talking about it at the time. Mm -hmm. And it's now on Disney Plus or Hulu. Um, and it is called Fresh. Fresh. Is this the uh, cannibal one? Yes, yes. Um, now, I don't really like cannibal movies, so I've it's, avoided. It's a really well produced. I like the name, though. Fresh. Really well acted film. Um, and it's very funny, uh, especially, I think, if you're a woman. Uh, it's even funnier because it really looks at the woman's perspective in the dating world and how dicks, how much of a dick a bloke can be. But it doesn't like it doesn't lean into that too much. It, it, you know, it, it's, it's accessible for both men and women, I would think. But the, my only problem with it was it was incredibly predictable, um, and I didn't really know about the cannibal side of it. I guessed it might be something to do with that from the synopsis. Uh, and sorry to spoil this, you know, if anybody's saying, I'm not, I'm not going to spoil it any further than that. But there is some cannibalism stuff in it. But actually, it's not cannibalism. Mm, there is cannibalism, but it's it's not just cannibalism. There's another reason that people are having bits cut off them. Um, but the two main actors in it are fantastic. Um, it's uh, the Winter Soldier, Sebastian Stan. And I've never really seen him as like a bad guy before. He's normally a Marvel hero or, or a goodie and whatever he's in. He played Tommy Lee um, in the uh, Pam and Tommy movie. Um, and Daisy Edgar-Jones, she's phenomenal in it. And it's a really good, fun cast. And I'd say I'd recommend it, definitely. My only problem with it is I probably, and this is probably, you know, due to me having watched so many bloody films like you and a lot of our listeners, You've seen kind of a lot of it before, and you can kind of predict sometimes where things are going. And I could really see where this was going, That's... but I did, I did still enjoy it. This is one of the troubles being a film film lover. Um, yeah, you start what, learning watching films when you're young. And, oh, it's amazing! Oh, what's this like? And you start to go. Well, we didn't have the internet, so we would just do it ourselves down the video shop. Oh, that guy! Oh, I like him in movies. Yeah. And then you'd watch a movie and go, "Oh, why is this movie quite good? Oh, it's a director. Oh, okay. What else did it? Oh, he did this one. Did he just?" Down by the video shop because you don't yeah, have any you know, internet. Yeah. You might have had a film guide or whatever. But regardless of that, regardless of how you initiate into films, like kids nowadays initiate films, it's it's that thing how much you love film. So you want to watch more and more, more. I want to yeah. listen to a podcast like this talking about movies because I love movies more, more. And you want that. And and it's that thing where you want it so much that unfortunately you're like cannibalism eating yourself almost because mm. you're eating yourself out of choice and then it gets to the point where you know what's going to happen and I watched a movie with one of my kids and we've never seen a horror movie and we've been watching it and they were like how do you know it's going to happen I fucking just know it's going to happen 
Yeah. You can just read, it, read it's the rare. film. It's rare that you can be surprised these days, but... but it's good to be happens. surprised, yeah. But, what, but you know, I, I can take that element out for fresh, and I can still recommend it and say it's a well-crafted, fun film. Really, um, it feels almost like the title. It feels very fresh and, and new. And I think if you haven't seen a lot of uh, that sort of film, you don't know whether... There's a couple of twists in it. This, the thing is, there's one twist in it, but there's actually secretly, there's about three or four twists in it. But I kind of guessed almost all of them. It's a bit of a shame, really. So although the average audience member would be like, oh my God, that second and third twist, I never saw that come in. I'm sat there like, right? Yep. But it doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it. So that's all I'll say. I did enjoy Fresh 2022. I would recommend it. It's on Disney Plus or Hulu. Um, there we go. That's the only thing I've really watched, really, that's worth watching. Worth Talk mentioning. About. Worth mentioning, even. Yeah. Thank Get you. your words right, you Get fucking your words. idiot. Get your words out of your mouth, you twat. Cunt. It's, not, it's, it's not lock stock all over again, is it? No. <laughs> I, I did enjoy that episode. That came out as a long one. Um, anyway, this intro is quicker than the others. We just get straight on to it and stop boring you lot. Yeah, that's it from us. So let it, let's go into a trailer for 1991's Child's that's Play like 3. It's intro music for me. Amazing. Trailer. Let's Right, Welcome to Hell on Earth. You are without a doubt the most pathetic thing I have ever seen. Oh, oh. Strict discipline. Does this look like a gun to you, Barkley? It's a rifle. Next. Rigid dress codes. Presto, you're a ball. Get those weapons in the air. I want to see them high. And grueling drills. It couldn't possibly get any worse. Wrong again, wimp. Chucky's back. A few years have passed. No, you're dead. We killed you. I'm new and improved. At Kent, we take bedwetters and turn them into men. Andy, how you've grown. (laughs) And this time... (laughs) Really gotta get out of this body! He's looking for a new recruit. I got some fresh meat lined up and I'm not gonna let you spoil it. (laughs) Now, just think. Chucky's gonna be a bro. (laughs) Child's Play 3. Look who's stalking. A haircut ain't regulation, soldier. Regulate this! back for our first review of this episode child's play 3 from 1991 chucky returns for revenge against andy the young boy who defeated him and now and is now a teenager living in a military academy bad wording there they missed out a word so i added it in directed by jack bender who did a lot and does a lot of tv stuff nothing really hugely notable Written again by Don Mancini, who wrote the original Child's Play film, and was pressured into writing this, starting to write this this film before the second film was even out. Oh, it it, it shows. Um, starring Justin Wallen uh, as Andy Barkley, another TV uh, face that a lot of people will know. Um, and what else did he? Do? Uh, I think he was in Deep Space Nine or, or Star Trek or something. You'd know him if you saw him uh, as a teenage Andy, and obviously Brad Dourif back as the voice of Charles Lee Ray, aka Chucky. Uh, you got to have Brad's voice, really, haven't you? He really makes you know. He's like it's Freddy like Krueger. Freddy he's like um, Robert England. yeah, Robert England. It's got to be really, yeah. you know. Yeah. And even though we don't see their faces, both of those two, the voices really make these these characters. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, this is Charles Play Three. So this is the probably I think this is the first Charles. Uh, no, this is the first Charles Play film I saw. Um, and because of that, cards on the table already. This is my favourite of the franchise. Really, of the, the, the earlier part of the franchise for sure. There are some good entries later in the franchise as well. But um, this is my favourite of the sort of earlier ones. Um, I find it quite at the time quite shocking still do some parts of it now and we'll get into that as we review it um i think the practical effects are still fantastic 
you know, and, and they do remain that way. They start using CGI in the later ones, but in this one, and certainly the next one, we'll be talking about Bride of Chucky. Um, you know, it's all animatronics and stuff like that. And and yeah, and this is where Ch- Charles Chucky starts to get a little bit funny in this one. It's it's not really until the next movie that it takes a Jason Six turn, is it, and becomes a full on comedy. This one is still a bit of a horror movie with a couple of comedy elements in it. Mm. But, um, yeah, so that's me. Uh, the first time I saw it, I can tell you, um, was a ra- is at school. And the reason I, I know it had an impact on me is because I wrote an English essay on it. Um, because at the time, and we'll get into this potentially a little bit more as we talk, at the time, the film, they tried to ban Charles Play 3 in the United Kingdom because... They, no, um, they, did, they did ban it, didn't they? They, they didn't, know. Oh, they didn't? They, okay. No, they tried to ban it, and a lot of shops and video rental places removed it from their shelves, but it was never officially banned. The Sun newspaper plastered it all over their front page because it was linked to the death, the sad and tragic death and murder of a young boy called James Bolger or Jamie Bolger by two other boys only a couple of years older than him. Um, And they tortured and killed this kid. I'm not going to get into the details. You can go and read about it if you want. Horrible. Uh, Essentially, those boys had never even seen Child's Play 3. All that had happened is that one of their dads had rented it at some point because obviously they check all your records you know when you're a kid if you've killed a kid and you're a kid so they checked you know the video the, the, the one of the dads had a huge video collection of horror movies but these two boys who did it who did the murder they'd never even they didn't even like horror films and they'd certainly never seen chance play three so it was all a, it was all a publicity thing but it did launch a huge censorship um discussion in the united kingdom so i wrote this uh, essay on it well you all can about sen- so I was going to say very quickly, very, mm-hmm. I, I won't interrupt again. Uh, but it's like um, <clears throat> you can see, because Chucky's like a little kid killing kids. I suppose that's how they looked at that at that moment in time. And if that movie's coming out, it'd been easy to just go for them. I'm not saying it's correct to go mm-hmm. like, "Why well, you can see how they did it?" Yeah, totally. And you know, and stupid uh, tabloid newspapers probably who hadn't even seen the film probably didn't understand that it was a... Uh, they never, they never uh, you know, actually watch these things. It's always yes, like, a, oh, you heard, oh, that movie's terrible, ban that movie, but have you seen a it? I mean, it's a, a voodoo, a, a killer who uses voodoo to transfer his soul into a, a doll, you know. It's nothing really to do with and, child murder or anything like that. And we <clears> do have, still have a BBFC and etc. and uh, uh, whatever it is in America, I can't remember. <clears throat> and uh, uh, censorship stuff. We do still have it in uh, countries, but with the internet and being able to like dispute things yourself and ebay and stuff like that it's the wild west really isn't it you know yeah so my essay was about the the increase in video censorship which this movie kind of started really in in the, in 92 probably it, and it, it made a beacon it made it put a light out there sort of thing to to go, I was to go oh what else could we look at so i wrote this huge sprawling essay about child's play 3 censorship I included the Power Rangers because, and bear with me here, because at the time they were on Saturday morning TV, but you had Mr. Motivator, who was a lycra-clad exercise guru, introducing the Power Rangers, but really hammering this message, you mustn't copy them, kids, you mustn't do ninja moves on each other. Um, And then there was also um, some stuff to do with ITV and the BBC were heavily censoring late night action films as we know and even not just cutting out the, the language they were cutting out the violence and the sex so it, for some reason like 13 year old dan really took a disliking to all of that and i wrote this essay which i was very proud to say i got a b for gav and i wish i still had that essay well done but so uh, i remember it, that was one of my highest grades in english i was never a very good uh, s- student but um i remember getting a b for that because i was so passionate about it so that's how i know this impacted me but um do you remember the first time you saw it no no i don't I mean, it probably was college sort of time or something maybe <clears throat> yeah so yeah years later, that but... probably would have been yeah um um it didn't really leave a mark for me um rewatching it now 2024 I, I didn't really enjoy it that much to be honest with you i hate to be to be your negative to your positive um 
But uh, I thought Chucky's face at times looked like he was stuck f- smelling a fart in the air. Yeah, I just didn't like the way the doll looked and stuff. But and um, I really thoroughly enjoyed though the Bride of Chucky because I loved the way that it, it went from there and goes forward there. That's for me is the turn. This was just yeah. I didn't find it <clears throat> fun at all. There's no no humour whatsoever in this really. Uh, Bride, Bride of Chucky is, is like the Jason Six where it. it it finds its feet and it knows it's a franchise and it can be funny and play with the, that and be a bit self-referential. Yeah. This was the last of Chucky being a bit of a more serious. I, I, um, I imagine if we, if we was going to, and I didn't really do it, but if we were to look at the, the, the movies two or three years, just before that Bride of Chucky came out, we'd probably see like, Oh, there's like the screams or whatever. What, what year was Bride of Chucky? Uh, 98. Yeah. There we go. Scream would come out as ninety six. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that giving that giving that whole different look on film on things, and then being like, oh, them just talk about true uh, true crime murders and stuff like that, and all that sort of thing. It was. I thought it was really. I really enjoyed that film. Um, it's more. It's more pop, I suppose. You can, you can tell it's it's of the Scream sort mm. of era because it's quite meta as this, well, isn't it? Probably. I would say this film is kind of coming from the 80s in a bit and not the feel, yeah. the feel of the 80s still. Uh, but I just don't feel it, tra- it just doesn't translate for myself now in 2024. That's what I'm saying. So that's fair. I, I hate to be, you know, I love no, you, Dan. That, and that's fine. But for me, obviously, Dan, it was the I first one I you. saw. Um, and I just really... I really dig this one because yeah, of course, because he's a bit older in it. Andy's a little bit older in it, and there's a little bit more at stake. It's funny, you know, like Toy you know, Story with Andy. Andy's in Toy Story, isn't it? I, I only thought that when I was watching that. I was like, he's got Andy. Oh my god! It's like I'm sure every person has thought of this since Toy Story came out. You know what I like about what I'm saying. What I like about this one though is is because everyone in it is more of a teenager. You don't you know that kids aren't really going to get killed off in horror films very often. Whereas in this one, because they're teenagers at a military academy, you you do the first time you see this, you, you're thinking, well, some of these guys could die, you know. And Chucky does have a fucking good go at killing quite a lot of people off in this one as well. Um, but yeah, let's let's get into it then. It was written by. Don Mancini, who invented the, the Charles Fay character and, and wrote the, the screenplay and goes on to direct the last two or three movies, actually, as well, um, in, from the franchise, which we'll get to whenever we get to them. Weirdly enough, and this is going to apply for the other one as well, and this is a really odd thing, Dan. Sarah and I did both these movies, but remotely, so we just had our phones on video call and watched the films and synced up. But she was watching different formats to me each time. So Interesting. First time, I'm watching um, DVD of free. Yep. She's watching it online. You've got the same copy of DVD that I've got. Yeah, you watch it just online. And the DVD was slower. No, uh, sorry, Sarah's copy was slower. Yeah, you do find that sometimes with, with streams or with rips or with um, online sometimes there was a small delay in it was, we, it was about it, three or four minutes and she, yeah. her, her copy her online copy was the imdb time next time around we did it again she had dvd i was online and it was flipped again and it was the exact same thing by about three or four minutes so we had to keep playing pause play do you remember that pause. happened when you, you and i watched um tango and cash together Yes, remotely, and we were watching the same version of the film, but for some reason, I was always a little bit ahead of you, and I, we kept having to do. And it was like, how am I ahead of you? I'm not speeding it up or anything. It's just weird how. Yeah. There, there must be. If anybody knows, please, listeners, if you know the reason for that, there's obviously a technical reason for it. You know, well, to do with, both I, DVDs and both accounts, which were the uh, uh, slower ones. Maybe like things faster. just run a bit slower. I don't, I don't know. Fast. I don't know. Who knows. <sighs> Well, it, let's get let's get into the story. It um, was frustrating. We, we've we've covered Charles Play one and two. We know that Andy is the protagonist, young Andy Barkley, and we know that Charles Lee Ray is a serial killer who put his soul into a doll, put to a soul into the boy's hole. Uh, it definitely is that, isn't it? In this, um, you got to say this is kind of like the Halloween movies. The Halloween movies got all those little, little bits. You can watch these ones, and if you don't like those, you can check out these ones. Don't like those ones. Check out Rob Zombies. Don't like that. There's some new ones. Uh, and this is like Charles Bell. I think you could do like one, two, and three as a thing. Then start yeah. with four as like a whole new style. 
Yeah, that's yeah. Because four then leads it obviously into the seed of Chucky, and yeah. But then the last couple I'm, have been about the cult and the curse, and yeah. I'm looking forward to some. <clears throat> I'm not looking forward to the next f- follow on uh, with part with five for that little kid. Man. Oh God! Like I don't that. mind some uh, rappers as actors. Meth, Meth Man's okay in that, but um, Red Man, Red, Red Man, and, and that annoying, annoying S-Club doll. Seven. Yeah, the little doll. S yeah. Club Seven. Yeah, Anna is in it from S Club Seven. Her and Red Man. That's a British pop group, isn't it? It is indeed. Yeah, mm. it is indeed. Um, well, how weird that's going to be for a movie to review. So let's get into this. So. Um, we start off with uh, the old good guy factory. So the good guys is the the make of dolls, obviously a play on the garbage pile kids. Um, They've gone back to the good guys factory um, because at the end of the last movie, Chucky was melted down and he died, we think. Well, he didn't because there's a whole bunch of sequels. Um, And they find the melted Chucky and they start cleaning it up. All these movies. I love it. You know what's coming, don't you? It's, it's the classic. It's like, comics. he's not, as a kid, even as a kid, watching Friday the 13th at the end, he ain't dead. He's not dead, is he? Whenever they call a movie, you know, the final chapter or the end, you know that that just means it's going to be you know, an even bigger thing when he comes back, you know, like Friday the 13th part four, the final chapter. It's not. I know. It's fucking not. Stop, stop trying to tease us with like, oh, uh, oh uh, do they think that, like, oh, oh uh, Harold, oh, how are they going to kill uh, kill him this time, do you think? Because they, you know, they says they're going to kill him. Freddy's dead, the final nightmare. And then and she's there going, Harold, it's the final nightmare, the last one. And then two years later. Oh, Maud, shut up, I'm having a poo. They've made, they've made a seventh one. Can't believe it. They killed him off. How are they going to do it? No. We'll have to go and watch it. Who are Harold and her bloke? Harold and Maud, don't know. But we can make a movie about them. You and me play Harold and Maud. Love it. (laughs) So, yeah, they're cleaning up the good guys' factory, and they find the melted Chucky. And this is just the nice little credits, sort of, it's going on while the credits roll. And essentially what they do is they pick up the melted Chucky, and they melt it down, but blood is coming out of him because, you know, he's got a human soul in him, which means he does bleed, he can be injured, etc., even though he's made of plastic. Um... And they create a new doll um, because you know, we cut to a... Well, then the doll screams and that's the end. And that's because we cut to a board meeting. So this big toy company having tough times, you know, He-Man's not selling well or whatever's going on. And they say, look, should we bring back the good guy's doll? And they talk about the controversy. Oh, no, because that kid, Andy kid... Oh, that he- it's, that's his pre-internet. You won't be able to do that with the internet. They'll shut you down in seconds. Yeah. No way. But they decide, you know, we're going to create, we're going to redo the the good guys dolls because they were always our bestseller. And we've had a bit of bad, bad press over the years because of this, like, these murders that happened. But come on, a doll can't really kill someone. Why don't they, all... this is the, at this point here, though, they could have brought a Chucky out with a, a little Run DMC costume on it. And that would have been like its new branding. Like Teddy Ruxpin, but he raps instead. Yeah, and it'd be a little leather bowl hat and a little tracksuit, Adidas and shit. And instead of, it's tri- instead of it's tricky, he's like, it's, it's Chucky, 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 Chucky. Chucky, Chucky, Chucky. <clears throat> yeah. Well, um, they talk about Andy, they talk about Charles Lee Ray, and it's kind of a bit of exposition from the last two movies. Um, somebody asks, why would we put good guys back on the market? And, and eventually they settle on the, 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 the boss, says fuck it we'll do it we'll 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 get them back mr sullivan says let's do it and as the boardroom starts clearing out they go oh we've got a surprise for you mr mr sullivan we've actually made the first um you know good guy doll and they give it to him as a gift little do they know that that is obviously got the chucky blood in it that is charles lee ray that is chucky and this is where things kick off really yeah, he's left alone, isn't he? And he's, uh, he's chilling. He's kicking back. He's, got he's a, a bit whiskey. of an asshole, but yeah, he's um, he's, he's playing. You he's know, jerking he's... off to the newspaper because it's pre-internet. You know what? He, you know what these guys are like. This is like the Bill Murray in Scrooge type character. He's got a giant office with a golf putting course in it, whiskey, a full bar, cigars, TVs, and you know he says to all of his cronies, "Leave me alone now. I'm here." And he's got the good guy doll in, in there, you know. And um, as the camera pans around, we see that the box is empty. Gav, what could that mean? It means Chucky is alive. Yeah. Oh shit! And we do get nice little POVs of something small 
running around you know the same things that we've seen before but it's all it's all good and there's a bit of a there is a a blueprint to the chucky movies and this film certainly follows those uh the lights go out and he uh he grabs his putter um and we see the little feet behind little feet running behind him some good there's some good use of um i guess they they're using little per, like little persons from some shots or children and sometimes it's obviously animatronics there's a really good shot in the next movie where there's an overhead shot yeah uh, and that looks so good because the perspective is so forced it really does look like two dolls are fighting but it's obviously just two actors in costume so they do some good stuff in yeah. all of these movies um the remote control is vanished and he wants to turn the channel over and he, see, he reaches underneath the sofa and he's what's under there what's under there and this is where chucky starts because chucky is an evil son of a bitch and he doesn't just want to kill you he likes to play with you first so he, he rolls some marbles on the floor uh, so that he slips on them and then he turns on all the toys there's like a, a remote control helicopter flying at him um and all the other good guys start talking so there's a few other good guys in the office uh, hi i'm robbie i'm your friend to the end hi yeah. I'm, and it's like oh, what the fuck's going on and he's freaking out and then all of a sudden i, lo- I love by the way it's massive train set yeah he's got suspended big one <laughs> suspended train set going around the office fucking Go- hell Gav, if you become the chairman of a giant toy company, you oh, can have whatever you want. I'm going to have it, and it's going to have a dildo in it, just going round in a carriage, right. going round and round and round, just going dying, bouncing off shit. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Uh, well, sadly, Chucky grabs the putter and smashes him in the face uh, and says, don't fuck with the Chuck. One of many sort of... Classic lines. Classic lines. He then throws some darts into the guy's back. I've put it on mixtapes. <clears throat> And oh, DJ Chucky chat. still. Of yeah. course, of course. He strangles him with a yo-yo. And then uh, there's a lot of good lines in this. He then says, nothing like a good strangulation to get the circulation going. Very, He very much channels Jack Nicholson, I feel. Um, it's the kind of stuff you can imagine Jack Nicholson saying if he was a doll. And then he grabs his computer. And even though there's no internet in the, 1991... There is a point where he sounds and looks actually like Jack Nicholson at one point. It's really odd. Cause Sarah, I was thinking it. Sarah's like, fucking hell, it's like Jack Nicholson. I was like, yeah. it fucking is. He is, isn't he? Um, he looks up somehow without the internet. He looks up Andy Barkley on this guy's dead, this dead guy's computer. And he finds out where he is. And he's like, he wants to get back into Andy's body. He doesn't really know how long it's been since he was melted, so he doesn't know if Andy's still a kid or grown up. It probably was the internet. Like, the internet was around. The internet's been around for a long, long time. This is not. But I know commercially though. it wasn't for like properly for a while. It still yeah. could, it could have been, though. Well, what he finds is, he searches Andy Barkley's name, and he finds that he's been sent to a military school. Uh, so there we go. That's the opening. Isn't it like an army academy? Yeah, military school. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, where, it's where naughty kids get sent. I just heard school mm. and I kind of missed, missed off the military. It's basically majority of kids in these American military schools, a lot of them are kids that are just very naughty criminal kids. Yeah. Uh, uh, and their parents can't be fucked with them, so they send them off there uh, and still uh, disciplining them. Yes and no. Not all of them I can't be fucked with them. Some of them just be like, I, I can't take it. No, no, no. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I said most of them. There yeah. are going to be the ones there that are, you know, haven't got much yeah, choice because yeah. they haven't got any parents or whatever. Or some of them want to join the army, gen- genuinely. Mm. Um, but there is, there is also, like, you know, a bunch of fucking people uh, here. That, oh, kids got in trouble, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we we cut to the school, and Andy is arriving for his first day. So I do love the setting of a new person arriving at like either a school or a prison or uh, you know, the army, because you always feel sorry for them having to get to know all the rules and all the people. Do you know what I mean? I love that kind of thing. So probably one of the reasons why I love this movie. Uh, I want to know why um, uh, Kirsty's dad. Uh, it's not Frank, is it? In a Hellraiser. As the barber in this, I can't remember what his name is in Hellraiser. Um, I want to know what his backstory. Can we have a spin-off? Can we have a unit Charles play universe? And we have his story, and it's him. Why he's so fucking obsessed with hair? Well, we'll get to him, but I do feel there's some pedo qualities about <laughs> that guy. <clears throat> the way he's going so, around uh, his he's, hair. He's probably keeping all that hair, making pillows out of. <laughs> 
Yeah, maybe his backstory links into that episode. So um, we need a we need a Charles Play universe, a CPU. CPU, baby. So Andy arrives and he gets taken into the office and one of the people that runs the military school says, No, I understand your backstory. I, I know that your mum's in a psych ward, but um these delusions you've had as a child of a killer doll, they're all delusions, you know, you need to drop all of that. You need to you're a grown up now. And I've got my eye on you. and You're going to be pulling your weight here at this military academy. I'm not going to have take any shit from you. So it's time to grow up. He says, all right, well, that's a good start. Here I am. Brilliant, yeah. Cut to the barber, who, as you say, gets off on shaving young boys' heads. He's got a wow. thing. He's got a thing wow. for it. It's, it's not, it, it, got, it exceeds the... Uh, his 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 place of work, his his abode, his his enclosure, shall we say, should be where any tendency of this to, to, to nature should stay. Not outside. You shouldn't be grabbing the people's heads when they're eating food and stuff. And hey, hey, come see me this week, and just weird stuff like that. Yeah, he um he he in my head, he's like he used to be a soldier. But he's had an injury, so he can't ever do anything in the field again. So they're like, well, you can still be in the army so if you want to be the barber. He's taking his tension out on yes, kids that's how haircuts. Yeah, because wow. he sort of frightens them, doesn't he? You know, and yeah. he screams at them. So, And he's got a catchphrase. Well, he explains why well, not to have long hair, because like, uh, you get your head pulled back and you get your throat slit. Just By the Romans. Sc- scares, yeah. scares them. Yeah, he... he so Andy goes to visit him, um, and he, th- this barber's got a catchphrase as well, which is, presto, you're bold, after he shaved your head. Yeah, and he's talking to Andy, and he talks about the throat slitting, like you say. He says the Romans didn't like having long hair in the army because your enemy could grab your hair like this. And he runs a razor across Andy's throat and says, you know, so that's why we have your hair cut short. And then he, he says to him... <sighs> He runs his fingers around his hair. Who's like a 16, 17 year old boy and says, it's a kissy goodbye. It's like, what, what is going on? Why is this guy so fucking, he's got it's, full on It's a lot of rage t- 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 bent up in that place. Yeah, it, he's not, he's not that, letting that sexual rage out anywhere apart from through his hair, hands and his scissors. Ugh. While he's in there getting his hair cut by this absolute pervert, Andy meets young Tyler very young boy at this military academy a lot younger playing his is it is atari Lynx, which was a sort of you know hit blink and you'll miss it handheld Hand console that came out and didn't really do very well it wasn't a game boy or a game gear wasn't it let's be honest atari um, tried bless them they did try they did try um there was another one wasn't there the nomad who made that one i can't remember who made that one though yeah. there was there was a few of these handheld ones but no the game boy was the king i think um so he chats to this young boy, and while he's getting his hair cut, a commercial lot comes on TV. And it's the good guys, and they are back on store shelves. And it's the little cartoon, and it's like, Hi, I'm a good guy, and I'll be your friend to the end. And Andy's watching it, and he's getting the PTSD flashbacks. Back to when he was a child, and his mum gave him one of these for Christmas, and it tried to kill everyone around him. And he's thinking, That on top of a pervert cutting your hair for you. It's just not a good start to the military academy for young Andy. It's not, is it? Not at all. The worst my barber does when I'm chatting to him is sort of ask me how my week's been. Hmm. He certainly doesn't run a razor across my throat or smell my hair. No. Or say kiss it goodbye. I'd be, I wouldn't go back to him. No. Well, maybe I would. I don't know. Maybe I would. Uh, Andy goes into his new room and he's in his room and he's thinking, well, it looks like I'm sharing with someone, but there's no one in here. Then he hears some noises coming from the cupboard. Yeah, the fuck is going on with this? What's up? What's up with this, Daniel? Please. He has got the most geekiest, fucking nerdiest, bullied roommate who is Whitehurst. His name is, and he has been tied up uh, in the cupboard uh, by um, Shelton, who is like the, um, the he's like the, the the kid in charge. Basically, he's going to be like a sergeant major when he's older, and they they basically have got. Um, Whitehurst as their their pet. He does everything they ask, and they've tied him up and put him in the cupboard Ugh. as a prank. So Andy Andy initially thinks it might be 
Chucky in there or something, you know, but it, it turns out it's Whitehurst and he says it was Shelton that did this to me. I'm sure you'll meet him at some point. And indeed they do because the next scene is an inspection. All the soldiers stood outside. I say soldiers, they're all kids, but they're all in uniform. And again, poor Andy doesn't know the drill. He doesn't know you're supposed to say sir and sir at the beginning and the end of each sentence. You know, it doesn't even know how to hold a gun later on or anything like that, you know. So we've got this Shelton character who's an absolute prick. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, he's, he, he's got dad, dad issues. He's played really well because I fucking hate this kid. And he's screaming in everyone's face. You know, he goes up to Whitehurst and says, you are a sorry sack of shit. You're the worst soldier I've ever seen. And then he looks at Andy and he says, uh, what are you looking at? And he says, oh, no, nothing, sir, sorry. And he's like, da! and just starts screaming in his face. You're going to listen to me. Da, 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 da. And really screams at him. And then this is where we meet the lovely De Silva, uh, who is a female soldier at the academy. De Silva. She says, under her breath, she goes, Same. you asshole. And Shelton says, what did you just say? And she says, sir, I said, you asshole, sir. Hey, so she's like, got the biggest balls out of anyone. Yeah. I, I quite like the fact that uh, very early on, we established a really strong uh, female character. And it's nice having her because she's re she is really like, she seems not senior, but she's been there a while because there's obviously uh, a relationship between those two already, the, the sergeant. Yeah. And she gives him shit and then he says, do 25 press ups. She's like, you know, right. Starts doing them. And then he's like, uh, uh, uh all right. He's a bit like, fucking hell, she's doing them. Uh, um, what one handed? And she goes, okay. And does like two, she or three more with one hand, uh, one armed. Um, and he's like, Oof. Right, anyway, and yeah, it's just the way she, 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 she disses up. him. Yeah, she disses him. She, yeah, and Andy's looking at her thinking, fucking hell, not but, only are you quite hot, but you're also a badass. But I, like, I, I love the fact that she's, uh, obviously she does think he's an arsehole, but Andy's turned up and she's like, brilliant dick. That's what she's for, because she very much fancies him. So yeah. she's gone, I'm going to I'm gonna stack up for him, because I'm going to get some of that. Straight away, and I'm going to show him how fucking cool I am. But also, any girl that can do 23 press ups and then two more one handed, what a badass. Uh, I think it's 27 well, and three more because I think it's any, 30. Any human that can do it. Yeah. Not, not just, not just oh, a no, girl. 25, you are correct. I could do a couple of um, one handed press ups, well, I could anyway back in the day, but. I'm going to come around and I'm going to film this and we're going to go live on the Facebook group. Well, I did the press up challenge once, right? Yeah, like, so we go live. We okay. go live. Right, fine, absolutely. So, um, Tyler, young little Tyler that we met earlier, he goes to. He's got, he's got ears like a vampire. Why? They're like, they're like light bulbs. They kind of go pointing, they go inwards. They're real big and rounded at the bottom, they go up and pointy like a vampire. Okay. I just thought he had a vampire ears. And I've got a little bit of a sticking out ear, so I'm kind of like in an ear thing here. Like, you know, I could say someone's four eyed if they've got glasses because they wear glasses. So, you know, I think there's an ear thing going on. I can say this without being enough, mm, rude. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, we find out a little bit of enough of a backstory of him because he goes to the um, post room and they go, Sorry, son, still nothing from your dad. So he never hears from his parents, this poor kid. And. But he says, don't worry, I'm sure he's off fighting battles somewhere out there, and he's just too oh, busy. Oh, great. great. But he's... he says to him, oh, um, if you want to make yourself uh, busy, though, um, there is a job, a special job that I can give you, because this kid is like 10. So they say, look, this big giant parcel in the shape of a good guy box dun, 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 has just arrived for someone called Andy Barkley, a new kid. Can you take the parcel to him? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And he's like 10, so he loves being given jobs to do. You know, it's like, great, I'll, do, I'll go and do that. But as he's walking along, you know, this, are... right, this kid, this kid has trust issues to the extreme. Yeah, but Gav, again, he's nine or ten or something. You no, know, like... no, no. Uh, my son is ten this year. So we're, we're exact same ballpark here. Um, I'd like to think that he's trust. I'd like to think if he saw, right, <clears throat> he sees a doll, yeah, almost <laughs> his height. Yeah, talking, wake up and say, "Oh, you fucking can," or whatever he says to him, and he says, "Fuck," he, and it doesn't, it doesn't bother Elijah. If that happens, that's one thing. 
then if he sees him killing people, if that does not affect him and think, oh, I don't know about this, then fair play across the board, nine to ten year olds have this open trust issue. If, if a doll says to a kid, let's play a game called Hide the Soul, I would hope that a 10-year-old kid wouldn't want to do that. See? See, you're on my, you're on my wavelength now. There's yeah. extreme trust issues going on. Well, even my kids, who are not even three yet, they... they probably recognise there's some danger. They've, they've got a sense. If like, they if saw we, a little kid, a doll, bigger than them, running around, they're not going to be happy. They've got a sixth sense, because if we walk past somebody in the street, and, and I think to myself, that person looks a bit dodgy. The kids will be like, Daddy, can you pick me up? And I think, oh, you know something that I don't. Kids can smell danger and fear, I think. Mm. Anyway, um, yes, yeah, so this kid, he's taking his parcel to Andy. But on the way there, he's bumping into everyone because he's little. And they all hate him because he's a little kid. And he drops the parcel down some stairs and it rips a bit. And he sees that it's a good guy to all, And he thinks, well, I'm going to fucking have this myself, aren't I? <laughs> yeah. So he takes it into the basement. He has nothing to do. He's there as a young kid who, with tr- massive trust issues. He has He's got nothing. Atari Lynx. Yeah. Well, oh, okay. All right. Pretty decent. But other than as Atari How did Lynx, he get the Atari Lynx? His dad sent it to him, I guess. Maybe. Did he? Did he now? Did he just maybe. nick it off someone else's post? It arrived for somebody else. Little somebody fucker. Else is, somebody else is still there going, my mum sent, sent, sent me an Atari Lynx. I'm still waiting for it to arrive. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad this isn't Amazon times. That could be... No, I'll take it. Every yeah. time. I'll take it. No, like, hang on. Hang on. There's been a problem. Everyone's complained about every Amazon package going missing. I don't know nothing about it in his room. He's there. Floating. Are you saying? Are you saying if we go into little ten-year-old Tyler's room in this movie, it's full of like widescreen TVs, stolen shit hi-fis? From there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. He needs he's his. Like, he needs his own spin-off. He's like Nick the Greek from uh, Lock Stock. Oh, he? totally. He's, he's, he's it, flogging them all around the military place. Oh, did you? Did you not come in the post? I've got one actually. I'll sell I've got it a Game to you. Boy. Do you want a Game Boy? Yeah, fifteen um, bucks. Well, he opens. He takes the 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 package down to the basement, and he's very excited because he's only a kid, and it's a doll, and it's he's seen these on TV. Uh, so, you, listeners, I'm glad I've established his trust issue, so you can let Dan tell the story of the child and his actions. Yeah. So he opens the box and he looks at it, and he's like, "Oh, wow, wow!" And he's looking at the doll through the through the little bit, bit of plastic, and suddenly Chucky rah, jumps out at him, and then the first thing he says to him is, "Ooh, that." Fucker you. Yeah. And and rather than sort of be a bit alarmed, the kid's like, Oh, I thought you guys could only say um ten different phrases. And then he's like Look, listen, uh I where's Andy? And he's like, Andy here and he's like, Andy Barkley, you know, and he's like, Where am I? And he starts yeah, that realizing was, that was quite good then. You're getting uh, almost getting that little range. Oh, thanks. He starts looking around, realizing you know he's he's in some kind of military school, and then he realizes that Andy would be a lot older. So he looks at this kid and he thinks, "Ah, I can get into your body, and then I've got even more years, you know." And and it probably, I spe- I guess part of his reason for wanting to go into a child's body is because a child wouldn't be uh, expected to murder people, you know. Can you change so- it to his spirit going into the child's body yeah spirit going into his soul uh so he says to him um let's be friends um let's play a game called hide the soul <laughs> you gotta pay the troll toll to get into the boy's hole it's hide the sausage roll are you saying boy's hole or boy's soul is it sounds like you're saying boy's hole <laughs> Classic, classic. Uh, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. But yeah, so he he basically he talks does say Tyler that. into yeah. into saying, "Let's play hide the soul." Cut into while that's all going on, we just have a quick cut to the shooting range. Just, before we cut to the trust issues with hide the soul, and I like, like, yeah, no worries. How do we play it? Talking, swearing, doll. Lie down on the floor, and I'll stand over you and and say Brilliant. the chant. Brilliant. I've got nothing else to do apart from I'm, still I'm what, still male. And while I'm chanting, thunder and lightning is going to uh, be coming over the, the sky. You Excellent. Know? Uh, and this is the chant, by the way, that he says. It's a... Uh, Ade do Dambala, give me the power, I beg of you. Valangela Santiera. And it goes on and on and on. Give me the power, I beg of you. And that's how Brad DeRiff 
gets his soul into your body. <laughs> Sorry if you're listening, Brad. Um, anyway, we cut briefly Get to the, sh- Brad. the shooting range, and this <laughs> and this is a, another chance to find out De Silva is a badass because she is a wicked shot with a rifle. Cool, she is. She's like Tom Cruise now. Anything she does, she's got a big smile. She's the happiest person at the party. And this is her first chance to flirt with Andy because Andy is shit at shooting. Um, <laughs> let and me, she says, let me put my arms around your yeah. rifle. It's a real mm. role reversal, though, isn't it? Because normally yeah, it's the yeah, guy yeah, yeah. to the girl. So it's cool to see. And he's like looking at her and she's like, don't look at me. Look at the target. Keep your eyes open. Squeeze the trigger. Don't pull it. Squeeze. Oh, and he's like, and he's like, oh, squeeze it. Well, well, it, well. it's that classic. I, I hadn't, I, the only time I've shot shotguns on the gun range, I didn't really do it, but I do want to do the whole get a sniper rifle and just be like, okay, inhale, squeeze. Mm, Gav. Exhale. I went um, clay pigeon shooting for my brother's stag. I, ha- I have done clay pigeon. And I was phenomenal at it. I don't understand because I thought I'd be shit at shooting, but... I hit almost every... I mean, we all did quite well, but I was like in the top two or three of the 12 of us that were there. That's I good. hit almost every one. I just have a natural eye for that. But when it came to the bow and arrow shooting, I was fucking atrocious because I didn't even barely have the strength to pull the fucking... The, you know, the, the the bow back. Yeah, yeah. Nat- natural hunter, apart from the bow. No, yeah, I wouldn't... Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't really be good at killing things either, I don't think. But um, clay pigeons, fuck them. I'll but shoot I, I them all. Uh, I don't know what I'd, if I could kill things. Probably not. Just on a side note, one of the worst injuries you can get with a bow and arrow, and they did warn us of this, and I ended up getting this injury, is um, if you're not careful and you don't I, turn I your body correctly. If you don't turn your body correctly, when you let go of the the string, it will it can take and has taken people's nipples off because you think how uh, tight yeah, yeah, it yeah. is. Uh, so. Yeah. The, and I did. It did catch my nipple, but it didn't take it off. I still have both nipples. I'm glad to say. Yeah, there's a few things with archery where it's, it could hurt. Even just your hand grip getting it wrong could really hurt because there's such a lot of tension going on. It's, you've got to have really uh, good when strength. You even let you? go of the boat, or even on the other hand, where it could go up and just just hit in the other hand. Is you know. Yeah, you've got to have very very strong arms. I think. Anyway, that's a, that's this this week's archery podcast with Dan and Gav. <laughs> On this week's uh, Archery Podcast, we'll be discussing nipples. Next um, week, Jeffrey Archer's coming in to talk about archery while drinking Archer cider. I like what you did there. I like what you did there. So, uh, yes, De Silva is a badass and she's helping him aim. Cut back to playing hide the soul. Luckily, two grown men interrupt this hide the soul game. Hey, so- good. Grown men should be interrupting hide the soul games. They sort of look at him like, Tyler, what are you doing here? You know, dolls are for girls. You shouldn't be playing with dolls. Is this, a, wa- is this a wanking thing? <laughs> it's for, it's for jack it off. <laughs> um, so they take the doll off him. And as they take the doll away, he says secretly to Tyler, I'll be back. Um, and then they take the doll away. And, Cut to outside, and poor old Andy. This is his first time he's going to have to do some rifle uh, sort of... I don't know what you call it. It's where you spin the rifles and you move it from your left shoulder to your right shoulder and all that kind of stuff, and you're marching along. It's rifle, shoulder, spinny, spinny. That's exactly the technical term for it. Thanks, Gav. Thank God you're a military expert. Um, Whilst Andy is taking, trying to catch up with the rest of the group you know, and move the rifle in the same way as them, he sees... And uh, Ch- Chucky being taken away by the the, the chief, the lieutenant. Chucky, he's, Chucky's probably like, fuck this. And I was being yanked along with my arm, you know, looking like a cretin. And this makes Andy drop his rifle, which makes Shelton, the uh, bad boy, go crazy. What are you doing, son? This isn't baton practice. It, it, again, another situation that it, it's just like into thinks there's Chucky and I've got this fucking dude last time it was haircut and on the TV yep. the advert and this is where you get that classic where um, he says sorry I'm just not used to guns and he goes this isn't a gun this is a rifle 
and then he calls his friend over and he says explain the difference and he says this is my rifle this is my gun this is for firing this is for fun which we've seen in lots of vietnam movies uh, they're basically saying that your gun is your penis and your rifle is the weapon that you use because these guys take it all too seriously at this military academy um, so they're sort of berating Andy, um, and Chucky gets thrown in the trash. Uh, the lorry comes on, the bin wagon comes along and picks up the, the big trash can and empties it in, and Chucky starts screaming. And the poor fella, the driver, he thinks there's a human in the back of his uh, trash wagon, doesn't he? He's like, oh, I'll get you out of there. Hang on a minute, son. Literally, this guy's on the phone, at a pay phone, talking to his wife, and I'll be home for dinner, I can't wait to see you. She said, I've got great news. Uh, and it's this amazing news, she's pregnant again. Did you know? This is the spin-off again. I love that you've given the bin man a backstory in this. And he's happy, he kind of thinks it's probably that. They've been working towards it, they've been trying. And he's on his way home to like for the happiness. I got but, one more bin to empty on my my way home. And uh, um, lo and behold, he's killed. But the, the the happiness that came out of the story of this was that the little baby ended up being a bin baby, bin boy, bin man. Wow! <clears throat> Incredible tangent. Fucking hell! Sometimes you surprise me. <laughs> Well, Chucky screams enough to make this guy get in the back of the bin wagon. The guy's trying to find this person. Chucky climbs out, turns the the crushing mechanism on. And it's not just a crushing mechanism. It's like a spinning thing with spikes on it, and it crushes you at the same time. And, yeah, it crushes him, dies. He screams. Shelton, Andy, and all the soldier boys on the field. They do. I like the fact that they all sort of run over to a... Actually, like turn it off, and he'll jump up in the cab. And, well, they're, they, you know, they're excited. It's his, you know, they want action, don't they? Yeah, but they <laughs> they go straight over, and they all work, start to kind of work together. One opens up the cab, gets in, and someone else does something else. It's, do you know what I mean? I, I quite like the fact that they were you straight away uh, worked as a team to turn it off. You sadly, know, just though, a small they... little pole which meant nothing, no, but you know. No, I know what you mean. I did like that, mm. and but sadly though, um, the uh, the bin man is dead. The garbage man's arm is hanging out. But, Blood is dripping down the garbage truck. But as we know, his his son is going to be bin man extraordinaire. Is he going to avenge him? It is going to be a bit of an avenging story because <laughs> he the, the baby is going to have. A, a movie later on and it will be the sequel it's, uh, Quentin Tarantino says he could do it for his last movie is it going to be Chucky versus the bin boy oh, it is coming back for Chucky because <clears throat> it's just a doll still um, but um, okay. it's going to be good interesting interesting well after this terrible tragedy that's happened at the military academy we are in Andy's room and Andy's got a little knife that he's playing with one um, one thing very quickly uh, predominantly for a little while all of Chucky's kills in this are actually uh, accidental looking so even though Chucky's quite happy to make a scene they're not um, um, so really no one's any the like what the fuck's going on here but uh, someone has an account of they saw a, a fucking doll do and something it all looks accidental the bin man looks like he was yeah, obviously that's died a good point. and the next one going on i think is the same as well we'll get to yeah no that's a good point actually maybe he's doing that to be clever or maybe not no no he's not because chucky doesn't give a fuck he would make yeah. a he would make a right mess he doesn't care he's not that sort you know is he's a, he can you know. he considers himself an artist doesn't he when it comes to murder yeah basically. what 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 is his aim in this to get to andy to do what to get into andy's soul yeah, but he yeah. theoretically can get into any kid's soul. Yeah, but he's he also can get into anyone's soul, can't he? Well, he's taken a liking to this younger boy, Tyler. He thinks, well, you're even younger. Can he get into a dog? I suppose he could. Why would he want to? I don't know. Just wondering. Can he just like jump in about different bodies? No, no. Well, you've got to know both phrases, as we find out in the next movie. But, once you, know, yeah, yeah, but once you know these phrases, you could just do that. Seems pretty straightforward, really. Yeah, um, just to record it onto your onto your phone. Just play that because, back. Because um, in the first movie, the very I want to I, I be a really big, muscly man today. Tomorrow, I'm going to be an old lady. In the very first movie, um, he just goes to some voodoo guy and says, "So oh, teach me how to move my soul into somebody else's." But he's like, "Okay." 
Hmm. So all you got to do is go in the yellow pages and find someone who does voodoo in your area and, and learn it. And that's how you do it. It, seems, you do like, it. it seems like more people, more <clears throat> things would be running around as objects. Like, I'm a transformer today. I've done a soul swap this weekend. I'm a mug. What are you going to no, do this weekend? Trouble soul is, swap. though, if you get into something and you can't speak like a mug... Well, I think you've got to be into a living thing, haven't you? You have to, yeah, absolutely. But Chucky wasn't. He was a doll. Yeah, but that was an accident, wasn't it? But yeah, but if that's well, why? So surely he tried, you can have that accident to, again. I suppose. Yeah, he tried to put his soul into the the cop, didn't so he? That, but, so that means you can go into inanimate objects. I suppose. That kind of just ruins it, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, should we finish the podcast? For good, we're done. <laughs> the final episode. That's it. Final episode, guys. Uh, it's been it's been a wild one. So, cutting back to Andy's room, as I say, Andy's playing with a little knife that that will come into play a little bit later on, and Whitehurst is polishing some shoes, and Andy says, what are you doing? He says, oh, I'm polishing, polishing Shelton's shoes. I basically say, bitch. Say polishing Shelton's shoes three times quickly. Polishing Shelton's shoes, polishing Shelton's shoes, polishing Shelton's shoes. Okay. God, that- it's difficult, isn't it, that one? Christ. So, basically, this poor kid's having to polish Shelton's shoes. <laughs> Um, and we're like, a, like, oh, we're like a bad comedy podcast, aren't we? We are. And Andy's like, man, he's really got you wrapped around his finger, hasn't he? He's like, yeah, he's an asshole, but I do what I got to do to stay stay alive. Uh, Chucky is in the trunk in their room, spying on them. Um, and a guy comes in. Whitehurst says to Andy, "Oh, by the way, uh, did you get that package? Tyler was supposed to give you a package." He says, no, I've Tyler's got shitted himself. Like, oh god, did it get warm in here? Did it get warm in here? I- I'm just got to go uh, check something. Walks did you get your room. Atari links? And, and Michael Myers is into the hedge. Brilliant, fantastic stuff. Um, but he, obviously, he didn't get the the package, so he thinks, well, that's weird. I'll have to um, I'll have to find out who sent me a package. I don't know who would send me one because the only person no. I know is my mum, and I she's in a psych ward. Yeah, I think I didn't get a package. Where's that gone then? Hmm, Tyler. Uh, Chucky, T- Tyler, where'd you get your new doll from? Oh, pff, you know. Chucky's sneaking around the room. Um, really, and, and, he looks so sketchy when it moves. And he grabs Andy's knife and he hides under the bed. And he actually little slices. Weird hand. He slices the back of Andy's heel, uh, which yeah, is so a very surely, painful looking thing. A slice of the back of Achilles' heel should be quite a severe thing, and he wouldn't be able to walk on that leg. But does and it doesn't seem to be actually a thing so did he miss i don't know i think because you're right because that is a move that i've seen in other horror movies oh, and um pet cemetery yeah and there's another one as well where somebody's you see it separate as they stand oh, up oh yeah you do i can't remember what it is is it one of those saw movies or something where it oh, happens to someone yeah. and you see it separate oh as they stand up? I, I can see oh, it good, i can see it? that i don't know what movie so yeah is. you're you're right that is a that is a move that would make sure that andy couldn't do anything for the rest of this movie but he goes on a fucking paintball hunt later on so it it, it, it isn't a thing it doesn't come up again <laughs> um so i'm no. assuming you missed but it just seems to really missed step somewhere I don't know where. so he introduces himself or reintroduces himself to Andy and all of Andy's fears are realised he says hiya pal you know what they say you can't keep a good guy down mm. and and all the other catchphrases and he says Andy says you're not going to get into my soul there's no way and he's like I don't want to get into no your soul no way getting into my soul are you saying my whole or my soul my soul <laughs> Um, but and actually, Chucky says to him, I'm not trying to get yours into your body this time. I'm going to get into that Tyler kid. Uh, fresh meat. He says he's younger and, you know, I don't I don't need you. And then he says a bit of a questionable line because the young boy is black. And he does say, just think, Chucky's going to be a bro. And you think, oh, you didn't really need to say that. But this was 1991. So Andy says, I'm not going to let you. Um he grabs Chucky and he starts smashing his head in with he, Shelton shoes. Chucky upside down, his hair comes down. Looks so weird. It's the oddest hair. When it's upside, I know it shouldn't be upside down, but Donald it just, Trump. It's yeah, extreme Donald Trump. It's so bizarre. He he could be a little Donald Trump, to be honest with you. That'd be weird. Are we saying it? Donald Trump if we put him in? Somebody please Photoshop Donald Trump in a Chucky costume. I'd love to see that. Fuck you now. Um. Shelton walks in the room because he's heard a commotion and he finds Andy 
beating up a doll with his shoes and he loses it his shoes are fucked um he's very unhappy and then he says ah i'll take this doll because it's my little sister's birthday this coming is, up this is where his hair looks really bad that's right he's holding him upside down and he yeah. says i think i'll take this doll and uh you make sure that my shoes look good for me tomorrow see you later I want to just go forget the murderous doll I want to go back to the whole postage for theft thing going on here poor Andy's had a package it's been stolen by this one kid this other guy's come along stolen the package to now give as a present to show his affection and love to his sister yeah Andy's not having a good day it's not good so night time happens and Andy decides well I'm going to have to break into Shelton's room in the middle of the night you know the boss, the the big, the head boy in big charge. Cheese. And I'm gonna have to get that doll back. So he goes in, he sneaks in, and Shelton's asleep in the bed. And he looks up on the wall and he sees there's an outline of a knife that's missing, a big Rambo style knife. And he thinks, oh shit, Chucky's probably got a big knife now. Cause he's in, he's been in here, but he can't find him anywhere. It's, it's like it's like I've not been in the situation. I have with big spiders, but like imagine if you oh we've got fuck what. Henry the pet tarantula has got out. Oh shit! Okay, and you're in the living room going, "It's okay because it's not going to do anything. It's more scared of you." Okay, but we just got to find it. It's like that, but instead you've got a murderous doll with a big fucking Rambo knife. It's so it's so much worse. I don't want to look under the bed. It's just I don't want to. I don't really want to move. And any second it might run towards me. And if a tarantula runs towards me, I'll, I'll, I'll probably move. And, but... and on top on top of that, Shelton is asleep, and you don't want to wake him up. Um... Oh yeah, that guy as well. A murderous stabby knife. But to, to be fair, if Chucky comes out, wake up the guy. Do some military shit on him. Brilliant. Underwear sleeping man. Go. Well, Andy pulls out his little knife. And Charlie, hey, that sounds dodgy. And um, Chucky uh, surprises him, and there's a bit of a struggle. And this wakes up Shelton, who thinks yeah. that, Shel- uh, that Andy's in his room with a knife in the middle of the night. And he thinks he's come to steal the doll back and also potentially hurt him because he's got a knife. So he's like, Right, this is it. Where's the doll? And he's like, I don't know. I don't know where the doll is. And he said, Well, looks like we got ourselves a thief. Cut to middle of the night pouring down with rain and Shelton basically to punish Andy has made every single kid from the academy get out in the pouring rain and march around in circles with their uh, rifles up in the air doing press ups and basically like trying to get Andy to admit he took the doll are, are, uh, are, you, are you sad that you didn't have this in your youth I'm so fucking glad I didn't have to do this I mean I kind of did at school PE was like this sometimes yeah, but, yeah, it wasn't as, like waking up in the middle of the night, I suppose, walking around in circles with a gun above your head. Yeah, thank God it wasn't that. But I did fuck, have to do fuck, some... Fuck that shit, though. Seriously, I, I did, who needs that? I, I did have a PE teacher that, that got a real kick out of it. Well, if it was really horrible rain, and we, we our school was out in the country, and he'd go, right, we're doing cross-country today for double PE, and you, he'd make us run, like, five miles in the pouring rain through mud and cow pats... And it would just be so horrible. And he'd be like, come on, lads. Come on, pick up your knees. Uh, oh. They always were horrible, weren't they? He teachers. He teacher, our one, he just sat opposite the shower. So as soon as the exit came out, and you're naked, he would sit there. Having a look? Yeah. Was oh. he impressed? I don't know. I never asked. Horrible. What did you, what, Miss? like what you see <laughs> it's like a 14 year old boy one, d- one day after volleyball one day um we were t- we were in the sh- we were all showering which we all hated as kids obviously you know you don't want anyone to see your private parts when you're going through puberty it's what it is what it is but we had to and there was one boy that was taking so long that our PE teacher came in the shower with the volleyball and threw it as hard as he could you know how hard a volleyball is and it hit this kid on the back and he was naked in the wet shower and it you you heard like the boing on his skin and we all just thought oh. and he said you're taking too long in the shower come on and i thought what so you're hitting him with a vo- volleyball on his naked back to make him that's not going to make him get any faster is it jesus christ imagine being a p like at school now doing pe it must be like so like everything's so sensitive 
It's cotton, yeah. it's cotton wool there. Don't trip. You're all right. Don't worry. Everything's okay. There's no one looking at you. We've got every gender shower you can. Everything's, nothing's happening. Everybody looked down. Everyone's blindfolded, in fact. Everyone's yeah. safe. <laughs> Back then, it was just volleyballs and... Oh, jerky. fucking and pedos looking at you. Looking yeah. at your todger. There you go. So, yeah, the others, while they're doing this marching, they all start realising that it's something to do with Andy. Very quickly, another thing, I've said this before, I think, at the same school I was at, right, a girl who was in my year, yeah, she was sleeping with the art teacher. Amazing. She, in fact, one night stole his car. I think she's like 16. 15, Where did you go 16. to school? I, I, I was about to say, I fucking can't look, say that now, can no, I? I've just said no. those things. And that's and that's just like, what the fuck? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. And I don't think anything happened to him, but yeah. But what the fuck? And it was a well, known thing amongst all, the, all of us, though. Well, the other kids um, start realising that this is probably Andy's fault, so they trip him over and they're all sort of saying, you're dead meat, Barkley. And he's like, oh, fuck's sake. And um, Whitehurst keeps saying to him, Whatever has happened, you need to like own up to it because we can't run around all night. In fact, the officers come out at one point and they say, "What's going on?" And he says, "We've got a thief." Um, Shelton says, "We've got a thief," and he's like, "Well, well no later than one a.m. I don't want to. I don't want to out here any later than that." So Shelton says to his second in command, "Right, we've only got two hours. Let's really work them." So they're going to be spending at least another two hours out there running around in the rain, doing press ups and holding their rifles. Poor kids. Um, Chucky uh, searches for Tyler. And Tyler thinks it's all a game of hide-and-seek that he's playing with this doll. Thinks, yeah, we're going to play hide-and-seek together. Because he's hiding from Chucky. Fucking trust issues. And this, and so, uh, uh, but, but Chucky is really annoyed. He doesn't want to play hide-and-seek. Uh, Chucky's just like, like, you're too easy to like uh, manipulate. I don't even need to manipulate you. You just literally give me piggybacks everywhere. But Andy knows that Tyler is in danger. So he says to Whitehurst... While they're marching, he says, "Where are the where's the um the younger kids' um bed bedrooms?" And he's like, "Oh, they're over there." So he says, "Right, I'm going to go." And he sneaks off, and he thinks he's going to go and save Tyler. But Shelton catches him and says, "Where are you going?" And he punches. Well, he sort of pushes it, it, Andy. It's a good character to have the the arsehole for any moment you need <laughs> need something to happen. Throw the arsehole in there. Well, he stops Andy, and Andy actually punches Shelton which really takes him by surprise. And he goes, that's a good punch, and you're going to pay for that. Um, so, yeah, he's... But at least we know Andy can swing a good punch, and he's hit our, protag- our main sort of evil bastard in the face as well, which is good. So, Andy tells Whitehurst, basically, this is what's going on. The doll is alive, and it's after Tyler. And Whitehurst obviously thinks, you are fucking crazy stay away from me i don't want anything to do with you let's just march until 1am and then all go to bed yeah it is a bit like what what are you on about now while all this is going on and this is getting close to 1am now chucky sneaks into this big sort of war room office thing with models and lots of medals and trophies he's looking for tyler meanwhile two girls sneak in one of whom is de silva and she's roped her friend in to sneak into the main office in the middle of the night because they want to look up Andy's file because De Silva's got the hots for him, like you said earlier, Gav. Yeah. And she wants to know all the details about him. So they look up his details. All oh, right, yeah, cool. His mum's in a, a, a psych ward. And okay, yeah, that's good. That's good to know. Yeah, great, great. Okay, he's so dishy. I can't wait. Ooh. So then they hear a noise and they find the Chucky doll. Um, they put some lipstick on him, um, and then they, loves that. he does. I bet he's really fucking annoyed with that. Uh, they tell Tyler to stop, you know, playing with the doll. Come on, it's time to go. And they all leave because the colonel was coming. The colonel comes in the room. It's one of my favourite deaths, actually. Um, and I'll explain why. The colonel comes in the room, and all he finds is the Chucky doll on the floor. So he puts it in the bin. Looks round. The bin's empty. And Chucky jumps out of him with a knife, and we're expecting this amazing kill. And what actually happens is, because this guy's a bit older and overweight, has a fucking heart attack, falls back onto a glass table, and dies. And Chucky does a thing reference here, doesn't he? What was that? You gotta be fucking kidding me. 
Uh, yeah, well, yeah, but it seems like the right thing to say for Chucky because he yeah. wants to take the kill. And again, yeah. it looks accidental. And he's been denied. In, yeah. the, in this case, he didn't even get a chance to do anything. Uh, he, All he did was jump pissed. out on this guy. He's so pissed off. Um, and I, remember as, I remember as a kid watching this thing, laughing my head off, thinking, that's so funny because this guy just had a heart attack. He didn't get to do anything. No. Uh, just before this is where uh, Chucky sounded and looked like Jack Nicholson when he says, this means war. He does. He does say that. Um, so the body is taken away, um, the colonel's body, and the, everyone's very sad. And Andy, I think Andy says something along the lines of, you know, this is too suspicious. There's two deaths in, you know, 24 hours. This is weird. So the next morning it's breakfast. And uh, Shelton says, this breakfast is dedicated to the colonel. Let's all take a moment of silence to remember a great man. Da, 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 da. And while they're all having breakfast, Pedo. Barbara's back. Pedo, Bar- Pedo Barbara. And Barbara? Gonna... <laughs> Barbara's back. <laughs> and Barbara's going up to random kids going, come and see me on Tuesday. Come and see me on Thursday. You come and see me after breakfast. And he's like grabbing their hair or smelling their hair. They're saying like, when was the last time you came to see me, kid? Uh, yeah, I know. It's he, like, he wow, this it. guy is fucking Jimmy Savile, so, man. Somebody keeping on him, but they didn't probably didn't care. Do you reckon there's anyone called Barbara Barber? There's got to be, aren't there? Barbara Barber. Barbara Barberson. Oof. But yeah, his true pervy nurse is shown here. Um, someone trips over Andy, because Andy what? wants to go over and sit with Tyler. Oh, uh, right. What were you going to say? Because uh, as he gets up and it goes off, I was like, oh, my God, he's defying like, the, the man. <laughs> it kind of is, because they say, you're not allowed to move tables. Yeah, but he that's what I thought, and, and I thought it was more of a thing like that, but it wasn't really. So. He wants to go and speak to Tyler, so he goes and sits. On his way there, he trips over the whole food hall. Right, sort of a sits. leg put out. I don't, I don't trip over. Some kid puts his leg out, and it makes him look like a right dick. He does. Not nice. Um, he sits down and, and says to Tyler, who's playing his stolen Atari Lynx we've established. Fucking can. Um, it's a ten-year-old child, Gav. Thief. <laughs> Fucking thief. Um, he says to him, look, I want to talk to you about Chucky. He's like, what about him? He's my friend. You're just jealous because he wants to be my friend, not yours. And Andy's like, no, listen, you mustn't trust him. You mustn't listen to him. And you must stay away from him. And he's like, he's just my friend. He wants to play with me. Oh, my God. Trust issues, kid. And Andy says to him, right, we'll take this knife just in case. And he gives him his little stabby knife. Um, so now Tyler's got a knife on him, which is great. And then Whitehurst goes to the barbers because he's been ordered to go and see Mr. Pervert and he says right we're going to cut your head he's uh, such a sad person like he gets glee in giving people misfortune or them getting their cutting their hair so they're sad he gets he, he's like a, a energy vampire or a happiness vampire he's a hair vampire Ugh. he sucks your hair off a hair pyre that sounds like a disease um, <laughs> why did you get turned on by it I don't know. Oh, what's, disease. What's the sexiest disease? What's the sexy disease? I say vampirism. Oh, right, yeah. I was, I was going for the STDs, mate, going, I don't know which one's the less. Gonorrhea. <laughs> Gonorrhea is really hot, oh, yeah. Chlamydia? Uh. I love the look of genital warts. Oh. Um, so Whitehurst gets his head shaved, and, of course, the barber says, presto, you're bold. Uh... Um, Whitehurst leaves and the barber's left alone and he's sort of snipping his little moustache and sweeping up and just being a general pervert really meanwhile Chucky's in his cupboard and Chucky's he finds in Chucky. his little cupboard and, and he finds the Chucky doll and he thinks I'm going to cut his hair yeah, I'm such a pervert I'm even going to cut this doll's hair and I he puts him in the I'll, chair I wonder if anyone's actually like, if anyone's going to probably possibly touch Chucky up as well oh, I'm going to touch this, up his doll this this and imagine Chucky being touched up that's what we need that's what we need in a child's play movie a pedo grabbing Chucky we don't need any of that in a child's play please (laughs) never want that (laughs) never want that Um, so he puts him in the chair and he says uh, okay (laughs) kiss your hair goodbye but before he can do anything Chucky's got his cutthroat razor and this this um kill really shocked me when i was younger the way the slit of throat happens he cuts the barber's throat and the barber sort of the the slit opens up a little bit as his head tilts back yeah. 
and the blood sort of comes out, goes all over the mirror, and Chucky says his line back to him, he says, Presto, you're dead. Yeah. Which is cool as fuck. And, um, says, and this is Chucky's first kill. Yay! First blood. And, and a witness, because Whitehurst has left his jacket, he runs back down into the barber room, sees the barber dead with blood everywhere, well, he goes, and Chucky... Boo. Yeah, but Chucky just says boo. So Whitehurst runs off. Um, and he runs out to the crowd where everyone's lined up. They're doing a war games talk because they're about to go out and it's just chatting about the situation. Uh, um, the main dude is to the sides. There's going to be two sides. There's going to be a blue side and a red side, is it? Yeah, blue, blue team, red team. Uh, it's going to be paintball c- rifles. Capture the flag, um, yeah. paintball pellets. Uh, and, and although the colonel's dead, you know he would want us to carry on because it's an annual tradition so it's really important that we honor what he would have wanted and, and this kid comes up traumatized and like he kind of hangs at the wall for a little bit then just kind of goes back into the crowd and it's like he should say like right at this moment the barber, the barber is, dead. Is, is is dead right we need to shut off everything get down there now say that to the main guy right now that's what you should do because that's the third person die in the last 24 hours at this military academy, you know? It's, but he uh, just gets in line and just won't say anything. But he's he's in shock, though, isn't he? He's, he's in shock at what he's seen, and also it's sinking in that what Andy told yeah, him. Because Andy know. said to him, the doll is after people. So he's starting to think, okay, so he's a wreck. You're right, he's a wreck. Meanwhile, holy shit, in the ammo room, Chucky decides... I know what'll be fun. Let's replace all the paintball pellets it's not with all real of them. bullets. Well, it, it's, it's just it does some. Yeah, but again, that's incredibly shocking that these teenagers are going to go off into the woods. Some of them with live ammunition and yeah. not know. Yeah, it's pretty full on. Game. It's pretty full on. Okay, now this is why I, why I love this movie because there are some shocking factors been, to it. If it had been all of them and they literally just oh. annihilate each other, that would just have been well. You could make that film nowadays. Funny you say that. It was originally going to be all of them, and that scene later, it was going to be a real bloodbath. Fuck. But they rewrote it and reshot some of it, and in the end, they re- they decided they couldn't kill that many teenagers <laughs> in one. So yeah, they, yeah. They, in the end, we only get a couple of deaths, and actually, it's more meaningful the deaths that we do get when we get to those as well, because um, only a couple of people really get killed. It does mean a lot. Um, but even so, it's still shocking that live ammunition has been used, and they don't know. Um, bit like Alec Baldwin just waving a gun around and not realising, you know, whoops, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, sorry, that's a bit too too soon, maybe? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, so they march into the woods, sing another little song, and Whitehurst says, look, I saw Chucky, okay? I saw him. I don't want to talk about it anymore. And we cut to night time, and they're all camped out. They're taking this paintball game incredibly serious. They're sort of having to camp out. It, it is very serious, yes. And sort of they're really trying to take down the other team. They can capture other people from the team if they want, or they can shoot them. Um, and this, you know, the goal is to capture the flag, basically. Um, so they're all sort of telling campfire tales. And De Silva and Andy get some alone time. They're overlooking the, the town nearby, and they see a fun fair down at the town. And this is where they have a little kiss. So uh, good on Andy. And De Silva finally got what she wanted as well, which is good. But there's a sneaky little red-headed pervert watching him kiss, isn't there? Yeah. Chucky's in the woods watching. Is he, he is a little bit of a pervert here. He's like, oh. Have they, done, have they done Chucky parody porn? I should imagine so. If they've done E.T. porn, they would have done Chucky porn. I heard about that. I listened to another podcast the other day. It's a podcast on the left, and they uh, mentioned the E.T. porn. They talked about it a little bit, and it's been like, oh, it's so bad. The one... The one that fascinates me, which I've never seen, and I probably should Google it at some point when Alice isn't home, is um, the Edward Dildo Hands. I can only imagine hmm. what the fuck goes on there, really. Edward Dildo Hands. Fucking hell. Who came up with that? I don't know. <laughs> Was it you? It was not me. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, they, uh, they kiss, and Chucky watches that. Uh, Andy says to... Um, Whitehurst, right, I'm going to go off, I'm going to sneak off, I'm going to go and save Tyler, because Tyler's on the other team. So he sneaks off. Whitehurst says, well, I'm not going with you, I'm too scared, I don't know what all this is about. Uh, the blue team start to move out, and they they can't find Andy anywhere, and they say to, what, um, to Whitehurst, where the hell is Barkley? He must be a traitor for the red team, that, that double-crossing son of a bitch. Um, <clears throat> Tyler sat up in his tent, 
and uh, Andy's searching the woods looking for him. And this is where we see a bit of a Yoda now, because Chucky's on Tyler's back, uh, marching through the woods. Yeah, I, it's really weird. At this point here, it's kind of should be almost, and there shouldn't be any rules, you should do whatever the fuck you want. It should be kind of the third act, but it's kind of weird. It just kind of just, just it doesn't feel like the story doesn't um, work properly almost. It feels like it just kind of flows along. It just keeps on going. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the third act is like the fun fair, really, isn't it? Yeah, and it's just, I don't know, it's just... This is know. the end of the first act, I guess. I wasn't having emotional ups and downs and as, as I should have such. Do you know what I mean? I'm not expecting much, right? So it's a, a part three in a, a franchise of horror movies. But my issues were, I just wasn't... The story felt very flat. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, well, so Chucky is on Tyler's bat and he's basically he's marching him. He's got a knife to him and he says, like, let's play hide the soul. Come on. He pulls a knife on him. Um, sorry, Tyler pulls a knife on him and stabs Chucky and runs off. Um, and then Andy gets caught by the blue team. Um, they call him a traitor, as I say. De Silva gets jumped by Chucky. Mm. Onto onto a like I, onto a back shoulders was it sort of thing? Yeah, to, yeah. She, does he jump down from something? Uh, I can't remember how he does it now. Um, Maybe he's just really good at jumping. We never knew. Yeah, little ninja. Tyler gets caught as well and Chucky grabs a radio and, and he sort of radios one of the team and says uh, this is good though because this is the best thing we have this in the next movie as well where he shouts out where the fuck are you Tiffany yeah uh, 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 well he's inside and it's just a normal person outside but because it's his voice he does have the power of being able to do stuff like radios phones ring emergencies call people find information <clears throat> without someone going what the fuck it's a doll and this is very clever, this scene, because of that, because he radios one of the teams and says, we got a situation here at the old Jeep. Can you come and meet us at the old Jeep? Uh, right away, we'll be, we'll be there soon. And then he radios the red team and says, red team, red team, come on in. I think I spotted the blue team here at the old Jeep. And he basically knows that these kids are going to come together at this spot that he's asked them to come to. Yeah. With uh, some of them with live ammunition. <clears throat> yeah, totally. And he's waiting for a bloodbath. Plus, he's got Tyler and De Silva there. Uh, so it's all coming together for him. And he's holding a fucking grenade. Chucky's got hold of a grenade as well. So It's not good. A killer, a killer doll with a Rambo knife and a grenade is not good. To survive war, you've got to become war. That's my little oh, Rambo. I'd like to see little Chucky dressed as Rambo. Well, we've seen Gizmo dressed as Rambo. I know, but Chucky'd be nice. I think we should get we should get a little uh, st- Chucky for the studio down that we don't actually have, and um, the virtual studio. Um, no, because we want it. But we could one we could actually dress up into different movie stars. That's a good idea. Liam my Neeson kids. in Taken. Liam doesn't really have a costume, but we could try put a shirt and trousers on him. When I take my kids into the city centre, sometimes to oh, go to one of the clothes, soft isn't there? Yeah, loads of different it- clothes you could buy for little people. <laughs> little. <laughs> No, Kids. no, no. I think you're getting it wrong. When I take them to the city centre, I go past this TV and movie store that sells all the prop replicas. Oh. And they always want to stop and look at little baby Yoda and all the other things. But they always want to stop and look at the Tiffany and the Chucky life-size dolls. Oh. And they love them so much. But little do they know what they actually are. They just think they're like cool little dolls that are the same size as them. Oh, I, know, like, I know the shop you mean as well. Is it the one where just if you just look out of it, there's an escalator going up? Yes. Yeah, I know the one you mean. Yeah, yeah. I had a look in there last year, actually. Yeah, it's a good little shop. I can't remember the name of it now. No. Not that we're going to mention it, because they're not our sponsor. Sponsors. So. Sponsor us, and we'll mention your name. So does Chucky Dolls. Um, so, yeah, Chucky's, Chucky's got the grenade. Shelton says, don't be worried, it's only paint, Barclay. Well, we know it isn't. Some of it isn't. Andy and Tyler arrive at the Chucky, uh, Chucky in the old Jeep, and they say, all right, we'll swap you, Tyler, for De Silva. Um, so they, they managed to switch them over. So Chucky's now got Tyler. Um, and then before they can finish the transaction, the two it, teams I, I'm arrive. I'm sure Tyler at this point is like, I don't know what's going on. I just want to play hide and seek I'll go with, with Chucky. my new friend. He I'll go with my friend Charles Lee Ray. I'll go with him. Yeah, he's even told him his real name. Hi, Charles. Um, but the two teams arrive and... During the commotion, they start shooting each other. They see Chucky there, who's laughing his head off. <laughs> he has a grenade unpinned. Uh, and Shelton is shot in the chest 
and killed and somebody shouts out, oh my god it's live rounds and they all stop shooting Chucky is absolutely laughing his head off at this point like an absolute maniac they're all like shocked that Shelton has been shot and he's dead um, we need to get a medic immediately Chucky then throws the grenade and Whitehurst is the only one that really sees it and even though he's a wimp and a nerd and a poor geek he is the only one that can save them all and he dives onto the grenade and is exploded and killed what a gentleman and Chucky runs off so we've we've lost Shelton and we've <clears> lost <throat> Whitehurst and I'm glad that that's really the only people that really got killed because it, it's more meaningful like I say that it was just these two if it was a load of kids yeah it would have been brutal and bloody but it would have been a bit less impactful <laughs> So uh, we cut to uh, Chucky runs off, so does Tyler, Andy runs after them, cut to the fun fair. So this is the third and final act, which is oh, half this, an act, uh, really. It's yeah, very quick. Yeah. Uh, they, they at one point go in this ghost train place here. This is the most epic, hugest ghost train I've ever seen in my whole life. Funny enough, my notes for this are this set. <laughs> the set is epic that they built. Uh, uh, they, they built this set. And yeah, it's oh yeah, that's it is. But just think of that as your ghost train. If you're like, oh, I suppose I'll pay a quid. Go on, I'll yeah, bet, bet be good. Because it starts off as a normal ghost train with coffins opening and stuff, but then by the end of it, it turns a into a fucking roller coaster on a cliff that spirals <laughs> down. You'd be and like, got, that's incredible. You'd come out. It's and people... got that um, giant Grim Reaper slip spinning his big blade across as well, and it's like, wow, the pendulum. Um, and people be like, how was it? It's like, it was incredible. Go in there now. You, you, it's better than you expect. I guarantee it. Yeah, I'd be going on this over and over again. Um, so yeah, we're at the fun fair, which is nearby, as we know. Tyler heads into a security tent and says to the security guy you gotta help me charles is after me he wants to hurt me and the guy's like okay kid okay sit yourself down are you from the military school okay i'll call this one in don't worry about it um uh but he gets uh he gives chucky he says oh i'll tell you what while i'm waiting why don't you look after this doll somebody handed it in at the last property dun 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 it's chucky so chucky's back with tyler dun 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 andy into silver are searching the fun fair. Uh, they find the security guard dead. Chucky's killed him. Another kill. So they take his gun because uh, they're going to need a weapon against Chucky. Chucky also has a gun, uh, which he took during the shootout earlier. And he uh, makes Tyler go into this haunted house we're talking about, which is so fucking cool, as we say. Andy follows in. Um, Tyler manages to escape from Chucky's clutches briefly. Um uh, but he is um, he's really scared by all the sort of different props and gags that are jumping out of him so he's, he ends up hiding in a cupboard so now you've got Andy and De Silva searching for Tyler Chucky's also searching for Tyler so they're all in this ghost house full of um, dry ice smoke and it's all very cool very amazing set it's a shame they didn't spend longer really in this fun fair I feel like this would have been a really cool final act really but it feels like half an act because it's rushed almost yeah because obviously with with chucky being like a a doll and a toy it would kind of it sit it sits quite well uh, uh in a fairground even other the rides on the fairground this could have been a bit more like a for example i'm jumping straight away remember dr giggles yeah, yeah. That's like a big bit in the fairground. There's been a lot of movies that do. But yeah, I think Chucky could have easily, but this is just such an epic thing. They must have spent quite a lot of budget on this, maybe. Yeah, just on this, really. Are unless, this probably, unless it was already a ride. Probably this and the Chucky effects were like the budget, really. The rest of it was just like the mm. military school. Um, anyway, it ends up with Chucky shooting to Silver in the leg, so she's kind of out of action. Now you've got a murder doll with a dog. A dog? A, a gun? fucking hell why did I say dog I don't know please don't ever get a gun and a dog muddled, <laughs> muddled up Jesus Christ I've just taken the dog out and come back with a gun <laughs> uh, yeah so she she gives Andy so her gun so where's the dog <laughs> She know. gives Andy. She gives Andy her gun. Tyler gets almost run over by the ghost train because he's climbing along the tracks. Um, and then, like we said, there's this giant grim reaper uh, with its scythe slicing backwards and forwards. Oh, this is nasty, and it's that yeah. dull. Yeah, Chucky's she, face gets sliced off like half of it. 
Yeah, well, Andy climbs, manages to climb to Tyler, um, and Chucky starts doing his um, "Give me the power, I beg of you. I have the power of Grey School." And Tyler is unconscious at this point. The lightning strikes. Then he shoots Chucky in the arm, which distracts him, um, and half his face gets sliced off with the scythe. There's a bit of a struggle. And it basically very quickly evolves into them all hanging off of the edge of the cliff. Chucky's little legs go up. Just shaking yeah. away as he goes. And in the end, Tyler gives Andy his knife back. He stabs Chucky. Chucky gets thrown off the cliff, flies into a giant it's fan. Completely and utterly sliced, but yet somehow manages to come back. Jennifer Tilly is a fantastic seamstress as we'll find out in the next movie. Um, and, yeah, he's chopped up to bits, blood and plastic everywhere, and it ends with the silver in an ambulance, Andy taken off by the cops. He is in deep shit, because they are linking him to all of these murders and deaths so far. And the funfair lights go out, and that's the end. And it's a good score as well. I've always liked the score for the Chucky movies. And that's it. So, really fun ride, but... Um, very rushed ending really i wish there was a bit more in the fun fair and as is often the case you know with some of these movies there's a lot happening but also it's not really saying much in the last act they're just rushing to the, I, the credits really I, obviously you always get interference but if it was if let's, let's say there was no interference we don't know nothing about it or anything like that from you anyone. talking about the barber again with interfering <laughs> no producers in their notes yes i like i think in editing I do think you could probably look at it, movie, move some things around and, and get some beats going on a bit more and uh, work with it a little bit more. And I think it might work a little bit better. Uh, mm. Maybe in, in script it's cool and maybe then they struggled to shoot some stuff and run out of time or something. It, I, for also, me, it doesn't hit, you know. Let, let's not forget that Matt Dom, Dom Mancini was pressured into writing this before the second film had even been released you know it's filmed but it was hadn't quite been released so he'd already so started writing already this. script isn't really in a good way yeah and and he, he felt he rushed it but he, he was paid a lot of money probably to do it so it is yeah. what it is yeah but it's, it's a shame that money has to be the thing that changes how good think, things can be i think the film did all right in america it did okay in the uk it, it was doing okay it was on sky quite a lot until the james bolger case um i do have some notes on that very briefly some of it were covered but i do i did make some quick notes which i'll just very quickly whiz through um so yeah the movie was the center of a tabloid panic in the united kingdom with the sun newspaper demanding all existing copies of the film be burned um the journalists claimed that the film had influenced two ten-year-old boys in the murder Fuck of a younger the child sun newspaper i know they they claimed that two 10-year-old boys had been influenced by the film and killed two-year-old James Bolger, um, which is fucking tragic, man. They're just um, fucking selling papers. It was, it was later determined that neither of the kids had actually even seen the film. Um, and there's also a myth that the film was banned in the UK following this controversy. Yeah, uh, B- like I the, thought it was. The BBFC never actually banned the film, but the widespread... Um, panic over the film and over the James Bolger case led to most video retailers withdrawing the title from their shelves and Sky TV pulled the TV pulled it from their TV channel um, Canal Plus did the same in Spain um, the movie led to legislation that enforced additional age restrictions on certain video films um, which is quite rare in the UK um, and you couldn't really get this film in, again then after a while until 2000 in the UK when it was released on DVD, uh, by which time all the controversy was largely forgotten. Um, well, that's it. It's tabloids fucking rolled that up. I'm just going to give a little trigger warning for this next little note, just because there's some bits in it. Nothing too detailed. Um, but the film is widely thought to have been banned, like I say. Um, and... The reason, some of the reasons for this were, was because in 1993, James Bolger was abducted by two 10-year-old boys who took him to a ra- railway line, tortured and killed him. So people link that to what happens in the ghost train at the end of this. Um, uh, it was alleged that the two boys had watched the film and reenacted the violence, um, especially the paintball scene where they splash, because they splashed James Bolger, bless him, with pa- paint as well. Um, so they kind of, they the Sun newspaper basically 
put all these things together and decided it was Charles Play 3 that was the reason for this, mm. which is insane. But the police investigated over 200 films that one of the boys' dad had in his collection. They even looked at everything he'd rented over the last couple of years, and he'd rented Charles Play 3 just a few months prior to the murder. Well, because they think the kids have watched everything that he has, so they had to check. They're just trying to figure out why two just trying to boys pick, would do just... this. <clears throat> yeah, but that's that's looking for something. I know. That's I know. looking and going, oh, this movie's got that. What a waste of time. The two boys hadn't even heard of Child's Play no, 3, let, let alone seen it, and actually said, we don't like horror films. So there was no, no link was, there at oh, all. It's a horrible case, and uh, I'm going to suggest you don't look into it, because yeah, I would, the, I the, into it. what they did to the kid was... Uh, um, and in fact, they never found any film that was directly linked to their actions. Um, so further, you know, shitting on the whole video nasty controversy from 10 years before, you know, it, there isn't really a link. There are going to be a few links as we'll look at in Word of the Strange, but there isn't really a huge link between people watching terrible things and then wanting to reenact them. It's a tiny percentage. Uh, and those people have already got something pretty wrong with their brain. Um so yeah i just wanted to mention those notes really because this film is quite you know it's known for that in the uk yeah uh, but yeah there we go but uh, there, that's charles play three uh a high strangers podcast which i do with sarah which you all know about because i said about it before but if you do want to get into the mind of uh, serial killers and stuff we do do that but i would never cover that case because it's not a nice one yeah, I know people that have read the book and I've heard snippets of stuff, but I don't I, want I, to know. I what did they go did. down a bit of a rabbit hole once. And the thing is, I'm especially <laughs> now I'm a dad and my children are two, and yeah. Jamie Bolger was two, it's just too heartbreaking really to think about. Those kids went on to, they went into prison, and one of them is now a convicted paedophile back in prison. So. Yeah, yeah, it came out. And Anyway, let's not get into that. Let's not get right. into that. So, thumbs up from me. Big thumbs up, in fact. It's my favourite of the franchise. You, however, even oh. after talking to me, you are saying... I'm going to have to wait. I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to wait until we finish all of these films before I can say, uh, you know, which is my favourite. At the moment, I'm going to go, because only because I can't really remember them, I really enjoyed the original. Um, the original uh, is fantastic. Uh, this movie, I'm going to give it a thumbs down. I apologise. I only give it a thumbs up to completists. Otherwise, I don't think Bob skip this. Go on to Broad. Fair enough. Fair That's enough. Well, there opinion. we go. I do apologise if you've got a fondness for this movie uh, and nostalgia for it and stuff. I'm looking at it 2024, really, you know, and that's my thoughts. Well, there we go. Well, talking of dolls, um, Bill Murray's just walked in with a couple of Barbie dolls under his arm. I don't know what's going on there. Where have you been? Have you been partying again with Barbie dolls? The, bar oh, the Barbie premiere? That was ages ago. No, you haven't. You haven't been there, you absolute fool. What have you been doing? Why are you their heads chopped off? That's weird. That's really odd, isn't it? Well, Bill Murray's here, which means it's time for World of the Strange. So it is. The strangest man in the world, Bill Murray, please lead us into World of the Strange. Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. World of the Strange. It's a strange world. Strange world. Thanks, Bill. You weirdo. Um, so, World of the Strange. Tell that as it is. Come on. Come but on, don't he listen to him. He's giving the thumbs up. He knows he's weird. Look at him. He's drunk. He said he's really looking forward to Ghostbusters. That's what it is. He knows. Um, yes. So um, for this World of the Strange segment for this episode, linking in with what we just briefly chatted about with the real life incident that was trying to be pinned on the Charles Play 3 film, I thought it'd be interesting, not fun, but interesting to take a look at some horror movies that have genuinely inspired real life crime. So this is delving into your, your other podcast world a bit, Gab, here. I do apologise for stepping on yours and Sarah's tootsies. Um, but yeah, this is real real life true crime. No, that's fine. I can I can put my true crime podcast in that one. So I'll be Sarah in this. Okay. No, don't worry, Sarah. I'm not doing anything silly. And I'm certainly not wearing a bra. Um, now, yeah, so let's start with one of Gav's absolute favourites. Let's start with Scream. Scream oh. 1996. There okay. we go. So in 2002, 
a tragic incident unfolded in France when a 17-year-old secondary school student brutally stabbed a 15-year-old girl 17 times. Jeez. Yeah. After being questioned by the police, he admitted he's obsessed with Scream. Oh, no. Uh, his And he wanted to copy the actions he'd seen. This is what he said, actions he'd seen in the film. Uh, He wanted to influence young people in the same way that Ghostface had. Um, So people were then worried. The French authorities were worried about Scream. And they were considering banning it. Sure. Um, They didn't in the end. The trouble is with this, obviously, we're not obviously getting into it. Um, And what you need to do with all these cases, really, is to get in in depth into their head and go back to the beginning. Uh, And obviously we won't be doing that today. I don't don't have No, no, no. But but so it's hard to to know why, because obviously we're like, well, what other things was this young chap doing before he did this? Do you know what I mean? What's yeah. the build up, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. Because I don't, because I, I don't want to be an advocate. I definitely don't want to be an advocate of that horror movies cause people to kill people. But if they've got, like you say, mentally something's not correct, um, well, things could influence. I, I imagine. What I would say is these sort of incidences are never the first time someone's done something like this as you know from your other show and and as we know from watching lots of true crime and stuff there's always stuff in someone's past and then something like this yes okay it might be the first time they've really done something but i guarantee this guy would have done something animals, to animals. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah. a possible head injury All that kind of stuff yeah so there's your first one scream naughty naughty now let's talk about the purge the original purge movie there were three murders linked to this film in 2016. Not surprised, honestly, not surprised. You can imagine someone, uh, obviously the country of America, has uh, uh, guns and stuff, like that, and people have access to guns, but you can imagine some people, angry people, whatever, be like, oh man, this movie's incredible, this is exactly what I'd love to do, I wish we could do that. And then the ones who are a little bit more extreme than that are like, who are going to do what you're about to say. Yeah. Well, this is in uh, Indianapolis. Um, So a gentleman, we'll call him, called Jonathan Cruz, committed robbery and then killed three individuals on one night in 2016. And he said, I was inspired by The Purge, Mm. which, as we all know, is one night of every year where anything goes it's, um, it's. I do like the concept of it. I've never. Uh, the movies don't do it for me. I did watch the first season of the TV show, and it kind of got into it more for me because I wanted to see the whole wide world rather than. I liked the first one, and I think the second one is that the one that's a bit of like the Punisher in it, the guy that's going around. Possibly, I can't remember. I but I, I, I think the first one is the best one. Mm. Um, um, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I do like the isolation, but I do like to see the whole world of what's happening outside. You know. Yeah, he also, they looked at his social media activity and saw that he'd been saying, I think the purge should be made real. I really like this idea. Maybe we should push for the government to do this for real. See, see? Um, so How they, many then, more people had that thought, but obviously just didn't actually go ahead? So, yeah, th- these actions led to discussions about the impact of unregulated media on individuals who may have criminal tendencies. So social media as well, you know, people can air their views willy-nilly and um, it's all a bit weird. But, yeah, this guy killed three people and did a house robbery just because he thought, well, I'm in a movie. Yeah. Good stuff. Let's move on to uh, Freddy, Nightmare on Elm Street. What, someone went into someone's dreams? this is something that happened in I think 2002 2006 so uh, Daniel Gonzalez also known as the Freddy Krueger killer had an unhealthy obsession with the original classic slasher of Nightmare on Elm Street he boasted about committing murders inspired by Freddy this is in London and Sussex in the United Kingdom Hmm. he attacked six people what year uh, sorry was this 2006 wow he attacked six people uh killing four of them and he said my crimes are the best things i've ever accomplished oh my god he said i'm like freddy krueger he's my hero and i wish i could be more and more like him he said i've got an alter ego called (laughs) 
Zippy. <laughs> <laughs> now, for anyone from the United Kingdom, there was a children's television show called Rainbow, yeah. which ha- which had um, some puppets in it. One of them was a pink gay hippopotamus called George, uh, and he had a friend called Zippy, who was like an orange blob who had a mouth with a zip on it and whenever he got too mouthy they'd zip him up so for this gentleman to have his killer alter ego as zippy just makes me think of that puppet yeah Uh, but they held him in a psychiatric facility uh, and eventually he took his own life oh well he obviously uh, wasn't enjoying the world with his head he so, may now be living on in, in other people's nightmares and dreams if he want, really wants to be like his hero, Freddy. Did, 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 sorry, I missed this. Did he actually kill anyone? Yeah, he attacked six people and killed four of them. Right. So what was his method? It doesn't actually say. Um, I think he used razor blades and knives, but it, he didn't. I don't think he it would have said if he called himself the Freddy Krueger killer. Um, oh, fuck's sake. When when these cunts kill them, give themselves fucking monikers. I'm the Zodiac. Fuck off. I'm Zippy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now Zippy. Zip it. There we go. Right, moving on then to Child's Play from 1988. Now, this isn't the one that we've already talked about. There is another incident that's linked to this. I don't know if you know about this. Mm-hmm. Have you heard about the second incident? No. What, for the original? Yeah, for the original. So, um, in Manchester, uh, what year was this? Let me just have a look. This was so. This is Manchester in England, of course. Uh, it, this was in 1992, so four years after the movie came out. Yeah. So in Manchester, England, um, a teenager called Suzanne—I won't say her full name—she was only 16, and she was kidnapped, tortured, and murdered by a gang of four people. Oh my in God. Okay. One of one of her captors, one of her kidnappers, tortured her with the words. Chucky's coming to play. Chucky's coming to play. Over and over again. Um, before she died of her injuries, they put headphones on her and blasted 150 volts into her ears. The line, hi, I'm Chucky, wanna play? Over and over and over again. Really? At maximum how, how, volume. How do they know that she, they said this to her? Uh, because th- because they've all admitted to it and they found the headphones okay. with the tape you mm. know afterwards so at maximum volume they played that into her ears while they tortured her mm. um, they were inspired by uh, snuff and true crime films they had a stash of snuff films no they didn't there's never been there's never ever been a, 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 a snuff film a real film. one yeah. a real one uh, yeah. uh, obviously <clears throat> there is videos on the internet you could pro- probably I imagine you. The, I've seen I imagine you could see something, but yeah. there wasn't ever like snuff videos, especially videos. And, you know, you know. I've seen. I've seen one, a real one, um, an, an infamous one, uh, um, of a guy. I'm sure I can't remember his name now. It's quite a famous case of a guy who lured another guy back to his apartment, and then basically chopped him up, filmed it all and did stuff with the hands and stuff like that and I was watching it thinking this can't be real I was watching it because I couldn't think I didn't think it was real but it's actually been confirmed as real and it's on the internet somewhere you can find it it's really not not nice um but yes so they had a big collection of true crime films what they could what they thought were snuff films and they said they were really inspired by video nasties slashers and they loved Child's Play the original Child's Play film that's not good for the horror community. So this poor girl had the last. Her last words were Brad Dourif over and over again at full volume in her ears. Well, I know how, that, how Brad Dourif feels about that. Yeah, not great, I should imagine. No, but he still made a bunch of these movies, so that's fine. <laughs> Fucking great. Let's talk about Saul. We've covered Saul in our torture porn special. I want to play a game. You need to decide if life is worth living for, hmm. said the prank phone call that Beverly Dixon received in 2007. Hmm. <clears throat> this was accompanied by instructions about her having to find a key to free her friend who was trapped somewhere in her house. And the message claimed, your house will be filled with toxic gas unless you find this key as soon as possible. But, but that is obviously bullshit. A pair of 13-year-old girls were actually responsible for the prank call, 
which they said was inspired by the original Saw movie, in which a killer forced people to do horrible things to survive so their did traps. So this woman standing go, what? Right, oh, oh my God, Jane, where are you? There's toxic gas in here somewhere, if I don't find toxic you. Toxic gas is coming in somehow, soon. Um, yeah, that's kind of the story, really. These two girls were caught, they were given a severe telling off, and Saul was in the headlines for a little bit, but probably a good bit of good press, you know, like because no one actually died this time. Yeah, just silly people, you know. The least they could have done is try and do the voice or something, you know. Imagine two thirty-year-old girls up phoning you up saying, <laughs> your friend, "How did they knock their your friend? Knock her friend. In your house. How did they knock a friend in the cupboard?" They didn't. There was no friend there. They just made it up. They, so, so basically. Just some, we just heard found out about one afternoon some kids watched that movie and their mum came home and they fucking made a prank phone call on her. Yeah, they did a Bart Simpson. Right, okay. <laughs> silly, silly. It's girls. a little less severe than the girl who was tortured a moment ago. But it yeah. is. Yeah. Well, let's talk about natural born killers from 1994. <clears throat> An Oliver Stone movie. Very, very, very violent film great film so even worse than the real life crime spree that inspired natural born killers because obviously it was based on a a real life crime spree the movie then in turn became the inspiration for school shootings in the late 90s oh no this includes the frontier middle school shooting in 1996 in which a 14 year old opened fire on his whole classroom killing two students and their teacher and that was because he was obsessed with the movie and wanted to emulate it. Natural Born Killers has also been directly linked to the Columbine High School shooting, in which two students shot and killed their teacher and 12 classmates. Horrendous. Um, so these incidents have now prompted tighter security measures in schools, including metal detectors, which continue to this day. And as a result of these connections, Natural Born Killers has become notorious for supposedly inciting violence in America's youth. It is one of those films that people say, well, don't let your kids see it. But again, it's kind of good publicity for the film, but it's terribly tragic for the, mm-hmm. the people that have genuinely been been inspired by it. You know, it's weird to be inspired by these things. Why? Kids, kids are still imagining to get guns at times into school, though, aren't they? Yeah, they're smuggling stuff in. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's a school shooting literally every fortnight in the US, isn't there? Or a, or a mass shooting of some kind. Yeah, I'm sure. It's crazy, really. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we'll never change either. It's so sad. Hmm. So sad. Well, let's talk about The Exorcist. From 1973. Go on, then. Psychologist Dr. Leon Morris says, Cinema, Cinematic trauma is the reason why Patricia Fraser not only killed her own four-year-old daughter, oh. but, also, but also cut out her heart. According to the doctor, his interactions with with the woman um, revealed that she suffered from paranoid schizophrenia. Yeah, I was about to say that. And she watched The Exorcist on television, and that prompted her to act on her delusions, yeah. thinking that her daughter was possessed by the devil. Yeah. She killed her four-year-old daughter and cut out her heart and claimed to have done it in order to save the world from demons. Fucking hell. Um, And this case is not the only violently disturbing incident that's been linked to this film. What happened to the lady? uh, Prison. Well, hopefully mental hospital. I should hope so. Mm. Um, Psychiatric ward. Hospital. mm, But Mm. uh, that is a pretty brutal one, really. But again, it's not the movie, you know. It was, it was already, she was already unwell. Mm. Okay. Uh, if if it hadn't been that that triggered her, it'd been something else. She could have yeah. even watched a religious program. Yeah, it could have been anything really. Uh, it could have been anything. It could have been. She not, would have might, might know. have watched Indiana Jones where he takes his heart out. You know, it could have been anything. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but that's an awful one, really. And it yeah. is unfortunately, yeah. Um, more quite possibly the child might have had, also had the same issues, but. Not Indeed. That it makes that any better. <clears throat> that should never be done. So. Well, I've got two more. Okay. Uh, the, ne- the next one is a film that I believe your Sarah is obsessed with, and I know I think you like it, and I'm talking about Warlock. Oh, yeah. Julian <laughs> <laughs> Sands, rest in peace. She does, she does like it. Uh, I, um, I can't really remember it, to be honest with you. 
1989. I think I think we watched it, Sarah and I, possibly. I think she'll be showing it. Showing at her phone now, saying we watched it. Oh, I probably did. Well, after seeing the film Warlock a minimum of ten times a day, uh, is it Sarah? Over the over the days leading up to his him committing a ritualistic murder. Blimey. 14-year-old Sandy. If you go, if I walk into Daisy's room, Daisy's like quite around that age, if I walk in there and she's watching the same movie, it's every time I go in, I'm going to be like, what's going on with this film and you? I'd, ten, I would have the dialogue. Ten times a day is quite a lot You would to notice. Watch a film. Um, he claims, so this 14-year-old Sandy Charles claimed to police... He acted on behalf of some spirits. The defence attorney uh, said that Charles killed a seven-year-old boy, cut strips of his flesh off, boiled it into fat, in hopes that it would turn him into the son of the devil. Uh, And that was because he'd seen a similar ritual murder happen in Warlock which he watched 10 times a day for a couple of weeks leading up to him finally thinking, right, well, I'm going to do this. Oh, wow. It's in my brain now. All right. So that's Warlock. You never thought a Julian Sands movie would be on this list, did you? No. Uh, the last movie that I'm going to talk about, which inspired a real-life crime, is uh, a movie that not many people talk about. I quite enjoyed the first one. It's called The Collector. Uh, yeah, I, I've not seen it. But this is the 1965 collector. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to have this on videotape, and, and I, I think I did watch it, and it was okay. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, it's all right. Um, so, Robert Bordella, known as the Kansas City Butcher, gained infamy as a serial killer and sex offender in the 1980s. Operating in Kansas City, he targeted young men and it subjected them to extreme acts of torture and violence in his home. His crimes included sexual assault, drugging, and murder. He meticulously documented his acts in a diary, a very, very detailed diary, which obviously the police found when he was arrested in 1988. He was convicted of multiple counts of murder and sentenced to life in prison. And whilst in custody, he explained, I've been inspired by the film adaptation of the novel The Collector. I'm really into it. And the whole film obviously centres around a man kidnapping and torturing women for his collection mm. so yeah that's the last one on the list really. wow okay some crazy stuff on there i think the, the one of the most shocking ones is either the poor girl who had the the yeah. you know ch- child's play thing in her ear or the bloody woman who's watched the exorcist and yeah but i think what i would say gav as we've already said is these people already ha- are unwell and i think it could be anything that triggers them. It's not necessarily a horror film. It could be an action film. It could be Rambo. There's going to be people that have watched Die Hard or Rambo and thought, I'm going to become a one-man army and take on my whole school because everyone bullies me. All of these things can trigger, you know? Yeah, so, if, if you're, you're yeah, definitely social. Uh, you're thinking yourself as a social outcast or, or things like this or you're bullied or that sort of stuff. Definitely, you, you're sitting there with that anger. Then anything is like, it could be a, a talk talk show or tv show a daily tv show or something and it's like if you've got this you should fight better do you know what i mean or even an advert anything could give you that instinct to go right that's what i'm gonna do and unfortunately these films did for these yeah. people pretty shocking stuff really yeah there we go well that well, was that's... a sad one today guys yeah well what are the strange you know it's a strange world and sometimes it's funny and people dying by having sex with horses or whatever it is but oh, this time God. around it's uh this time around, it was oh. real life tragedy. Sorry no, to put that so one back in your Don't brain. do that. Those we, things we, are horrible. We've covered that on this show, and you've covered that on your show. And Sarah's projected you to oh, that one too. So. Why do people keep doing it to me? Yeah. Sorry about that. Me. Oh. No. Bill, he, help me, Bill. Bill, I think you should take us out of here before we are inspired by Ghostbusters to help become me, <laughs> paranormal busters. Let's get out of here. That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though, give me Ira. Careless pets. Weird.
Chucky's back. But this time, there's more to fear. Because this time, he's got a playmate of his own. Bride of Chucky. White wedding. Chucky gets lucky. Barbie, eat your heart out. Nasty. Bride of Chucky. 1998, 18 hour and 29 minutes, but different if you're streaming it or on DVD. Ridiculous, the DVD's slower. Anyway, Chucky, the doll possessed by a serial killer, discovers the perfect mate to kill and revive into the body of another doll. I like this one. It's directed by Ronnie Yu, who has directed a lot of... He's a Chinese director who's directed um, some really good Chinese movies, particularly The Bride with White Hair is a good one. It's got horror elements in it. I'm a big fan of uh, Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, he really got into... Oh, he did broke into 50, Hollywood. He did The 51st State. How yes, random. He did. did. Um, he's uh, really broken into um, uh, the Hollywood um, for, for a while, at least, anyway. This was back when uh, John Woo not, and not other uh, foreign directors... Though. No, he, he's gone back. He didn't. I don't think he really liked. Well, he hasn't directed the anything system since 2013. Uh, but I don't think he really liked the Hollywood system either. Um, yeah. can't, can't blame him. Yeah, this is fun it's, though, and he's he's definitely put like a, a real fun, fresh spin on the whole Chucky, and definitely set it off on a course where it's, where it's still at now. And it go, and he did the same with freddie versus jason because there were times where that yeah he f- made that <clears throat> fresh again both of them really for doing that whole thing yeah uh you know and it's a bit cartoony but but fun and still very gory at times you know this film is very uh, meta and self-referential but also refers to a lot of other horror movies as well um and you really feel like it's found it's this franchise has really found its feet on this one don't you uh, yeah, the, like Chucky has a moment and he says, like, yeah, I, I, I can't remember what he says exactly, but he's saying sometimes it has to take part three or part four to actually get it right and start it again or whatever. No, he says um, <clears throat> if this was a, if this was a movie franchise, it'd take a good two or three um, episodes before we got to this. No, he says a third or f- three or four, I think says. So. And it, obviously this is the fourth movie. And at some point, um, Jennifer Tilly also says to him, you know, stabbing with a knife, that's so 1980s. So there's just loads of stuff in it. And somebody looks at the Chucky doll and says, oh, my God, these things were big in the 80s. No one cares about them now. Ugh, it's not 1988 anymore and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, there's some some interesting stuff in this. But I, I do like <laughs> the fact that Chucky calls out, uh, you know, you have to start fresh again and his class is sort of part four. The one they're actually in is the start again. <clears throat> and... Um, there's some stoner humour in this, which we'll get to as well. And again, like you said in our intro to this episode, this came out in the middle of the Scream and all those movies that were coming out in the late 90s. And you can really feel that vibe. There's a bit of a polish to them. Um, there's a young, hot teenage cast. Um, and yeah, that stoner comedy and, and Marilyn Manson and Rob Zombie soundtrack. <clears throat> A lot of stuff to like about this one. And written by Don Mancini again, so like, yeah. um, interesting, but he would have been, and you know what it's like, he, he, if, if any of the major sort of films are made by studios, it's just the way it is, and you're going to have them looking at numbers and looking at what's cool and what's not and saying like, incorporate this and incorporate this, but sometimes these things work well with the right people in the right hands. And this yeah. director and writer of Combo's sort of done that and made this a, a real fun movie. Obviously, it's a, quite a few more years later from the last one, so the styling of the, the film's a lot more more modern, should we say, now if we're looking at it, where the other one felt a lot more almost 80s, like I said, you know. And what's fantastic is this is the introduction of a, n- a new character to the franchise, really, other Indeed. than Andy Barkley. Yeah. Um, Jennifer Tilly plays and Tiffany. A, g- a good choice, really. Like, uh, you know, uh, there's going to be people here for her boobs. 
you know, there's uh, loads of people. Daisy, I told Daisy what I was doing. I said, I'm going to do this. She goes, oh, I love Tiffany. She's amazing. She's like my idol. I'm just like completely, like, I want to be her. And I said, well, pray me, maybe not the serial killer. If you could try not to do that, that'd be good. Yeah. Um, otherwise, people would be saying podcasts are bad bad thing you shouldn't listen to them you might kill people she'll end up on a list and word of the strange <laughs> weird how meta or we'll be on someone else's list um uh hopefully not um yeah so like um it's a real icon you they've literally just made this real fun goth icon that listens to white zombie uh like i said large press attractive lady so like all oh, like, the kids um kids teenage boys teenage girls sort of thing all gonna fancy her um loads of people fancy she's got a massive demograph in that sense she kicks ass she's kind of a bit weird she's a bit out there she's a bit goth she matches chucky she's she, mental and i'd never have her as a girlfriend though, i'll tell you that she she matches chucky's uh, psychotic nature yeah, absolutely uh, and, and, and especially hell. when she's a doll as well you know and, and it's great because you've got the yin and the yang yeah. and they're like bonnie and clyde they're like yeah, yeah, mickey, yeah. mickey and mallory you she, know, but at the same time though he's a he's an arsehole to her he d he treats her horribly. He is. As she as she's just like yeah, this is what this is a bad idea. She comes to realise in the film. Yeah. Um. So you know. Uh. Anyway, and then he has to be a dick and make her turn into doll. She didn't even want that. So, again, the whole way of time, Chucky's like a domestic abuser in it. Yeah. Well, he's not a very nice guy. No. But and she realises that, and she she says in the film, "Why can't I just meet nice guys?" Because if, I think it's because you're a lunatic. That's probably why. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he, want, he doesn't want to get into the boy's soul in this one, does he? <laughs> Should we get into it? Let's get into the what? Into the boy's soul? No. <laughs> so, start the film. It's night time and it's raining. And obviously, it's a play on the Bride of Frankenstein. Yes, there is a lot of that in there. Uh, in fact, and it's such a fun idea. If Don Mussini was sitting there, he'd watch Scream and stuff. Going, how can I make this sort of fun movie like thing? What could I do? It's been like, oh, maybe he was sitting there watching Brian and Frank. So I went, Chucky needs a bride. You know how uh, yeah. that, that lightning bolt, uh, that that fucking light bulb. Sorry, and. Yeah, just very quickly on that, at one point she is, Jennifer Tilly is watching Bride of Frankenstein and then her final lines. It's actually playing right this second, IMDb right now, in the bathtub. That clip just played. Amazing. And saying. her her final lines in the movie are from Bride of Frankenstein as well, which we covered for a Valentine special many years back. A very good film. Get back and check it out. Um, so yeah, nighttime rain. Uh, we're in an evidence lockup. Police evidence lockup. Someone's in there. I'm walking along. Why do you think? Um, do you think it's a case the studios just uh, had it? I think it's Universal. Oh uh, yeah, of course it is because they played Bride of Frank. So. Um, Universal just like, what can we do? What what property can we put out? Cause it's got a few years later, and it's not like because the last one was hot property because it must have lost money with uh, like England's decline in uh, rentals. Um, you know why? Why do you think they thought? Do the, I guess it's studios going what can we do what can we remake what can we sequel like we always well, do yes and horror was hot again in the late 90s so they could go what can we what have we got with properties that we own yeah and we can what bring can, back what can, what can we refresh and get a correct for, person for the new generation even you know let's get the guy who did 51st date in um, okay oh no he did it after this great movie um so walking through this evidence lockup, we also in the background see Jason's mask, Michael Myers' mask, uh, with Freddy's glove. Oh, I uh, didn't know any of this. Leatherface's chainsaw and the crates from the um, creep show are all in this what? evidence lockup. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, so we're following this cop and he looks in a locker that says unsolved case on it. And inside is a bag and he doesn't know what's in this bag. He takes the bag out gets in his car and he said he calls someone on the phone it's all very mysterious and rainy and dark and stuff and a sexy lady's voice it's, she's got a sexy voice straight away though i'm more interested in this film than the last one sorry she, she, she says i've got what you asked for and i'm on my way and it's tiff it's tiffany um and he wants to look in the bag he really wants to look in the bag and he eventually peeks in but we don't see what's in there initially because mm. before he can really see what it is, 
Lieutenant Patilia shows up behind him and slits his throat. Tiff, tiff, tiff. You naughty girl. Exactly. Definitely not girlfriend material. Now, do you know that Jennifer Tilly uh, uh, is very good at poker? I didn't. Oh, yes, I did know that. Yeah, she's been on um, soap poker, that um, program where all the famous people play poker. Well, she has a World Series of Poker, a WSOP in a gold bracelet, which is quite a thing. In addition to that, she is inducted into the Woman, uh, into the woman in Poker Hall of Fame, as part of the class of 2022. So would you poker? Oh, my girlfriend will be listening. Um, funny enough, I asked the same thing to her. <laughs> um, she's made over a million from um, poker. Good. Amazing. Mm. Anyway, Jennifer Tenney. She's got a hell of a voice, hasn't she? Yeah, yeah. She's quite, a, she's quite a character. She is perfectly cast for this film. Yeah, she's... um. She's brilliant, yeah. She's because she, you never know what she's going to play, really. But you know she's going to probably be slightly unhinged in whatever film she's in. <laughs> yeah. And she's she's incredibly sexy. But she's got that really that voice that says, "I smoke a hundred cigarettes a day," but it's still quite sexy. But yeah, she can look all sweet and innocent, but or she can slit your throat. You know, she's she's just great. And yeah, you're right. She's perfect in this. Um, and you know, perfect. The, the design for the Tiffany doll is perfect as well, you know. Because although it's not really, it doesn't really look really much like her. It's not really supposed to. It's a doll, and the voice just suits the doll. Yeah, uh, just like Chucky Brad the Riff, does not know. look like Brad the Riff. So yeah, <laughs> thank God, little <laughs> redheaded freak running around. Um. So yes, this cop's been. He's had his throat slit. Jennifer Tilly looks inside the bag and says, "Hello, Dolly." And we get some... I'm not, I'm not sure if it's Rob Zombie playing or Marilyn Manson. It's White Zombie. White Zombie, that's what I meant, sorry. Uh, but it is Rob Zombie, but his band... It's, it's, well, it's a very apt song. It's Living Dead Girl. Yeah, Living Dead Girl. Um, and that's the kickstart of the credits. So we get to see lots of clippings of the previous films, newspaper clippings of all these um, murders that have happened. Charles Lee Ray, Andy Barclay. Um, she has loads of dolls. She's got a big doll collection, hasn't she? Uh, she's got this, like, mobile home, like... Trailer. A trailer. But, like, um, it's ridiculously huge. At one point, she just has this massive bathroom with just a bath in it. And it's like, this is huge. You've... Space-wise, I don't know how you've done this. You're it's four like the to bed. It's just incredible. It's not like Eminem's trailer on Eight Mile, where it's just like a bed. Yeah, this is which like, is like most of them. Yeah, this is like incredible. Yeah. Well, you know, if you win poker enough, you can buy a fantastic trailer, Gav. I guess so. So while all this is going on, she is sewing this doll back together. And this is the doll, this is the Chucky doll from the last movie, which obviously got sliced and diced in a big fan. Mm. She, she sews it all back together and she staples its face back on. She, <laughs> um, with Jennifer Tilly in her character she's playing, she just brings like a whole new alternative and goth uh, fan base to the, to the film. Totally. And this is like a real... This is all that white zombie um, Marilyn Manson. This Manson's is right in that time, and yeah, it was, it was yeah. hot as fuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, she basically staples the doll space back on, sews it all back together, and and there we go. That's what that, that's the deal. Then knock on the door. It's, so, it's Sarah it's, hated this guy. <laughs> so this is Alexis Arquette, and and. His I tattoos. Better, I mean, he he was a them. He was a he then. Right. But, you know, go. I believe. I don't think he's a they them now. I think he's a she, a she now. Really? Um, yeah, Alexis Arquette now. Um, but yeah, he really wants to be Marilyn Manson. This boyfriend of hers, Damien. His tattoos. Oh, oh my god. Yeah, and he's got all the piercings. You know, and he's really into the whole goth stuff. And he sort of shows up. At her trailer and he's oh hi yeah. um but we'll see more of him in a minute because we just very quickly meet our young sexy goodies in this film um john and, and i'm not talking about uh john ritter who is is in this as chief warren 
So John Whit- Ritter is the uncle in this to Jade. Uh, he looks after Jade, and Jade's got a boyfriend called David. Uh, sorry, not David, Jesse. Uh, and they have a gay friend called David who they hang out with. And Warren... He's, uh, John the, he's Rit- the beard, isn't he? Yes, he is, because he knocks on the door and says, I'm here to take her, and he's like, mm, I don't believe you. And it's because she's actually banging Jesse. It's the- like the stud who lives in a trailer next door to Jennifer Tilly, we find out. This is the woman as uh, Seth Rogen knocks up. Uh, Catherine Hayu, yes. Being is, knocked yeah. up. Yeah, indeed. Hence saying that way. There we um, go. Um, uh, basically, she, it's not It's her, his stepdaughter, niece. niece. Yeah. He fucking hates her. He will do well, anything, like a sad little shit he is, chief of police as well. Surely you should be doing other stuff. He hates her so much. He won't let her do anything. Yet he doesn't want to like, do anything nice for her either. He's a real Tackleberry real when it comes to the Tackleberry? Law. Tackleberry's a nice person. He's a fucking... Yeah, I suppose. He's a... Uh, what's the chief? Police Academy. Um, Mauser. Yeah, Mauser or um, Harris. Oh, that's Captain Harris, actually, isn't it? Yeah. But he's like Captain Harris. He's like more like Captain Harris. Um... <laughs> Fucking great films. We should do the Police Academy movies. I'd do those. It would be yes. funny just to do them for the fuck of it. Because the talk would be funny. Um, <laughs> we used to shout that all the time at school. Proctor. Um, yeah, so anyway, we established that he is overprotective, to say the least. He's the chief of police. He's got all the police. But he doesn't in actually his time. care about her, though. That's the weird yeah. thing. He just doesn't want her to date anyone he, and or do he, anything well, or have he, any fun. Yeah, he just wants to be in control. Indeed. And they drive off and they get immediately pulled over by one of his cronies, who then makes them stand out in the rain and questions what they're doing, etc. He breathalyzes them. Anyway, we'll come back to that in a minute because uh, Tiffany's in her trailer and she's got this pen- pentagram on the floor that she's created. In a out, massive kitchen. Yeah, in her giant kitchen in her tiny trailer. Um, and she starts chanting the ritual, you know, give me the power I beg of you by the power of Grey Skull. Um, nothing happens. There's no, or she thinks nothing happens. Oh, damn it. I tried to get Charles, Charles back in this doll, but nothing. I like the fact that she has a dinner table set for two, all knee out. Like, Chucky's going to come out and go, hmm, what's for dinner? And there's a little doll's going to sit there and just have a dinner. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? All right. Oh, what a day today, really? Yeah. Is that going to happen? A murderer she, in a little doll is going to sit and have dinner with you? She's a wonderful woman who just wants to make her man happy, do Gav. You, do you know who she reminds me of? She reminds me of that little kid that the vampire is in the, in the last movie. Oh, bless him. Bless him. Well, just when her ritual hasn't seemingly worked, this is where Damien knocks on the door. This guy that we talked about just now, with, her boyfriend from a months ago. Chucky would have his favourite meal. I think spaghetti. Well, his favourite meal is mentioned in this. What is it? Swedish meatballs. She's had a major favourite. Swedish meatballs. There we go. Meatballs and spaghetti. Mm. Meatballs and spaghetti. So Damien comes into her um, trailer and he says, oh, take a look at this Polaroid. I killed someone today. Look, I made a real mess of him. And she's like turned on immediately. Like, he's such oh, a dweeb, uh, isn't he? And he's basically pretended he's made himself up and taken a picture of it. Cause she then says, hang on, I recognize this. This is you. You haven't killed someone. Yes. Yeah, such bad tattoos. And she basically has killed at least one person, probably a lot more than the ones we've seen. And he's trying to get into her knickers. So he's pretending he's killed someone just cause it turns out, They've never actually slept together. Because he says, when are you going to, you know, when are we going to finally, you know. And she says, right, okay, well, here's what we'll do. And then just before she can say anything, she realizes the doll's missing. Yeah. And she gets a bit excited. She thinks, oh, my God, it's worked. So she she handcuffs Damien to the bed. She uh, says, do you want to play a game? Yeah, she ties him up, handcuffs him to the bed, and she starts doing a little sexy dance for him. Chucky, but she's plonked Chucky sitting on his uh, chest, so they're both looking forward, and yep. Chucky's watching the dance as well. He says to her, I remember these things, they're, they're so 80s though, but if it turns you on, then I'm into it. 
And she's like, yeah, all right. Well, now check out my sexy dance. So she does her sexy dance. And she says, there's something I've never told you about me. Charles Lee Ray was my ex-boyfriend. I used to live with him. And we were going to get married. And um, basically, he says, oh, yeah, I heard about that guy. Um, didn't he transport his soul into a doll and all that bullshit? It's an urban legend. And this is where the head spins around. And says, uh, she, he says to her, this guy couldn't satisfy you. Um, he says, oh, he's only a little doll. And the head spins around and looks at him and says, it ain't the size, asshole. It's what you do with it. And uh, he sort of screams. Um, he rips his lip ring out. <sighs> that looks painful, doesn't it? Yeah. Rips his lip ring out. And then he just suffocates him with a pillow. He does. Just a classic... Little classic suffocation murder there from from Jackie. Nice. Nothing to, you know, it's his first one in a while, so he wants to start, you know, just a little suffocation, that's all. And, yeah, uh, they hug. She hugs the doll, and that's that. <clears throat> Cut back to the rain, and our heroes are having their breath tested for alcohol. And then John Ritter shows up, and... Uh, he says, the, the boyfriend, Jesse, says to him, you've done all of this just to stop us from going on a date. You fuck. And he says, and you won't fuck her or anyone. I'm going to make sure of that. And it's like, Matt, you're talking about your niece. Just let your niece get some. It's bollocks. It's just Come on. fuck off, you can. You're being a, bit, being a bit much, really, aren't you? He's very, very, very overprotective. Um, and he says, they say to him, if we wanted to, we could make your your blood tests look like Christian Slater on New Year's Eve. This must have been a thing of a time, I'm sure. At the time, that must have been in the news. Dude, Google it. Christian Slater was a big, big fan of the white marching powder. Yeah, I, I think I knew that. But like, what what happened on New Year's Eve? Are they just saying like it? Uh, it's, just it's he good, would be more partied out on New Year's oh, Eve. Oh, that's the, the night that you'd want to be out with Chris. Okay. Imagine being out with Christian Slater and Nicolas Cage on New Year's Eve in wow. like in like ninety one. That would be amazing. Making a scene. Those two walking into a bar together. Wasted. Amazing stuff. And Bill Murray's in there playing darts. There must have been. There's going to be a moment in time, in a place in time. At one point, there's just all of a sudden the, the most random amount of celebrities ever. For it, it, they didn't even know why, and it all just appeared to be in the same place somewhere on the world. Somewhere, do you know what I mean? There'd just be like there, there would have been. There just would have been one time, and it's just like oh, there's seventeen different acts and stuff from around the world. What or celebrities or just what the fuck's going on? Not a normal party, but a, a situation arose or something. Because you, know you, I mean? you sometimes see like photographs yeah, from, of like, randomest like, people, of, like four people that you're like, why are they in a room together? <laughs> yeah, that's the weirdest A team ever. <laughs> I love it. I love it when you see that though. You know, mm. you just think, well, I don't know how they would have got in that situation where they all they're all together, but they pose for a photo and it's documented, and I love them for that. I don't know how we got into this, but anyway. We're talking about Christian Slater and Uzi. Oh, right. So, cutting back to Tiff, and she says, I've made your favourite Swedish meatballs, Gav. You guessed it. Yeah. <clears throat> and then she says, um, you know, I found the ring after you died. And he's like, what ring? You know, the ring. The ring that you were going to use to propose to me. And he goes, oh, no, that belonged to Veronica, the, the brawl that I killed. Oh, I'm glad you still got it. It's worth about $6,000. I wasn't going to propose to you. He laughs at her. <clears throat> and he laughs at her. And she, I think he calls her a dumb broad or something. She starts to realise her decisions and her actions are not the best thing to try bring back a killer, a serial killer and a doll back to life. She, she says you I haven't could changed. Have, I could have, she could <clears throat> ask me that and I could have saved her a load of time and effort. So but don't, she, don't do it. But she did suspect this was going to happen because she says you've changed. You, you haven't changed a bit. Is that why she's got the crate? Yeah, so she locks him in a playpen, locks it. So it's, he a can't get it's a crate, pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> and all it's got in it is some like kids' toys. And she basically says, "You're so tiny, like a little baby." And then she locks him in there, and basically she's going to torture she him. She tickles him, doesn't she? Yeah. yeah. And he's really annoyed because you know he's he's the size of a child. He can't do anything about it. 
at the moment until he gets out. Um, and then she goes off and has a good old cry in the, the bed next to the dead body, which I love. Just the dead body's just there. And she even takes the pillow off of his face and then uses it to sort of lie, or lie on and cry a little bit. It's pretty weird. Yeah, it's it's good definitely stuff. not girlfriend material. <clears throat> in the morning, uh, Jesse who lives next door to her, who is uh, Jade's boyfriend from the night before. He sees her on uh, in the trailer park and she's packing. She's got a huge trunk that she can't move. And he's a bit of a hunk, this one. Any guy has got some muscles she on him. She saw him topless the other day and she quite fancied him. And it's been, um, we could do get a moment when, like I said, where Chucky says, where the fuck are you, Tiffany? Yeah. So he helps her with the trunk, which has actually got Damien's body inside it, and he puts it in the car for her. Uh, she says, oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Would you like to go for a drink sometime? And he's like, oh, I've got a girlfriend called Jade. He is a fucking loyal guy, because if Jennifer Tilly asked you to go for a drink, well, I don't know, man. Well, Alice is generally quite jealous of you and any woman, so, like, that's... If I'm if Jennifer Tilly's come to Bristol, watch out, Alice. Oh, I, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be worth it. I'd, my balls would be destroyed. Would. Alice, Alice would. would be wearing them as earrings. She would. Um, she, she would have murdered Jennifer Tilly as well. Yeah, I can't even talk to a woman sometimes. No. Yeah, but there we go. You know what? You know what she's like sometimes. Yeah, it's a bit weird. It's fine. I like that she's so uh, protective of me. Imagine if I was like a really super good looking guy like Ryan Reynolds as well. She'd be even worse. She'd be she'd be committing murder. She'd probably need medicine to help. <laughs> I'm glad she doesn't listen to the show much. <laughs> Sometimes she does. Love you, babe. One day she'll go back through them. Yeah, so we while he's helping her, yes, you're right, we hear Chucky shout, Where the fuck are you, Tiffany? And she has to sort of just cover up oh don't worry about it you know it's nothing it's nothing and then he's playing with a speak and spell I laughed says, at his letter block saying kill Tiffany slowly oh, yeah kill Tiffany slowly on his blocks and then on the speak and spell says spell woman and he types in B-I-T-C-H that is not correct and he's like shows what you know pal it's like a bit but it's fine it's Chucky he's a, he's a dick so that's fine she gives him a dot. I brought you a present, Chucky. I brought you someone to play with. And he gives her... She gives him, sorry, a doll in a wedding dress. A bride doll. She, he could use this as a blow-up doll, like a sex doll, couldn't he? Well, I was thinking that. I was thinking the yeah, first time I, I saw this... I thought that as well. The first time I saw I this... Said I said to Sarah, yeah. said he could use that as a sex doll, couldn't he? Because he says later on, we're anatomically correct after all. Yeah, so uh, he could have he could have done it anyway. He probably did. But she's made the mistake of putting the ring uh, with a big, sharp diamond on it around the doll's neck. Yeah. And says, you two should get married. And he says, you are so dead. And she goes off to have possibly one of the best scenes in the film. Jennifer Tilly has a lovely bubble bath. She does. And um, watching a little bit of Murder, she wrote, first of all, which she is She does, great. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And then Bride I'd want to be in that bath with her, watching those two things in a row drinking some wine with her and she's even crying I'm going to tell of, Alice to listen to the show at the end of um, Bride of Frankenstein she's sort of crying a bit when he says we belong dead yeah, Bride of Frankenstein is amazing it is amazing um, and then she sees some TV reports about a body has been found in a trunk and it's Damien and she just doesn't really care because that was her and she doesn't really care really but we see, see Chucky walking on uh, he breaks out the box with a knife and it looks really good he well no he uses an, um, the, the diamond to saw through the bars, the diamond ring. Yeah, then he gets a knife, doesn't he? Then he gets the knife and he he brings a, a surprise attack on her in the bath. She screams. He knocks the TV into the bath, and she is fried, fried in the bathtub. The old classic toaster in the bathtub, TV in the bathtub, and then he chants and he's play, he's getting her back in because he does the whole. A, he's such a wanker. He does the whole give me the power I beg of you and he transfers her soul into the doll so he can do that to anyone I guess so so why can't he do this more often I don't know so it's just I'm breaking the logic of it while we're doing these child's play movies well she's pissed off because she wakes up and she's a doll as he would be 
And uh, he says, well, look at me. I got the body of G.I. Joe. He's not, you know, he's like, you're the same as me now. We're on an even keel. And she's very, very angry. She punches him. Yeah, she punches him. And So she, and it, <clears> then it's basically an excuse for him to have someone else that like, needs to get the amulet to get himself back out. Yeah, because the only way that you can transfer the soul back out... So he knows that it's with the amulet. She's going to help him. Uh, but the amulet has been buried with Charles Lee Ray's actual body in a cemetery far away. Sarah's logic was, why doesn't, it, doesn't he, like, you know, he could do a gunpoint or a knife point, make her drive to the cemetery? So you can transfer a dead person's soul into an object without the amulet, but to put it back into... To do it the other way around, you need the amulet. Is that mm-hmm. right? That's what they're saying. That's that. That's, that's the come rule back out, in this film. Back out, yeah. I, yeah. I, well, I don't know what. What's he going to be do? If he can already just go into other bodies, what's he going to do? He can't come back out as Brad Thuris body because that's not there now. It's dead. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't understand his logic of what he's actually doing. Then, what does he need the amulet for? It doesn't make sense. Well, let's ignore that and just move on. <laughs> Perhaps if Don Mancini's listening, he can fill these gaps. Because even Jen for Teddy, what, what are they going to do? Um, Tiffany calls Jesse. Okay, I don't understand. And again, obviously, she's on the phone, so you can't see that she's a doll. Let us know, listeners, if you know what's going on. Tiffany calls Jesse and says, Hey, Jesse, my next door neighbour, um, can you do me a favour and just pop into my trailer and pick up these dolls and take them on a road trip? I'll pay you. And he's like, What? That's a bit weird. And before he goes in to collect the dolls, she. We have a little montage where she really goths herself up, doesn't she? Goftage. Goftage. That sounds weird. <laughs> I could have a goftage this evening. <laughs> what what dessert would you like this evening, Gav, after you Swedish meatballs? You can have um, tiramisu, or I have got some fresh goftage if you like. <laughs> Is that what fresh goftage? <laughs> it's fresh goftage. Fresh goftage sounds not nice. <laughs> Uh, but but Chucky loves her new look once she's doled herself up, and he thinks, "Oh, this is good." Hey, it does this way it gets a little woody. <clears throat> no, no, that's a bit later on. I love the fact Woody tells Toy Story. He says to her, "That's when he says to her later on, I'm starting to feel a little like Pinocchio over here, if you know what I'm saying." Can we now, please, Universal, watch a movie where Toy Story's uh, 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 Woody teams up with Chucky? And they go on madcap adventures where Willie's just trying to say, stop killing them. Or, or, oh. They're after the wrong Andy. No. They switched Andys. W- Woody's a sheriff. He's after Chucky. <sighs> Let's do that. Not the fugitive. And it's all going to be to do with the, the wrong Andy or something like that. I'm so into that movie. Sounds weird. <laughs> And it's like The Fugitive. So old craggy face Tommy Lee Jones shows up. And The Fugitive, I watched it again recently. It's, it's quite unfun, actually. You think it's, it's, quite you a, think it's gonna be? Yeah, you think it's gonna be quite fun, and it's, it's too it's, long. It's just not really that much fun. Uh, yeah, I actually quite. You think you sequel. like it? <clears throat> yeah, I can't remember that one. Uh, Witness. Um, no. no. Um, not with Harrison Ford. It's the one with uh, Wesley Snipes. Oh, yeah. There. yeah. yeah. What's it called? It. I can't remember what it's called now. It's called something boring, like County Sheriffs or something like that. It's not got a really US snappy Marshals. title. US Marshals. That's the one. <laughs> County Sheriffs. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, what are we going to call the movie? <laughs> County Sheriffs. <laughs> that, <laughs> That's no. going to fly off the racks. What about um, Police Officer? No. We need something snappy. U.S. Marshals. Great. That's what we'll call it. (laughs) Policeman. Well, one of Jackie Chan's best films is called Police Story. Yeah. (laughs) I I still need to see it. It's on my list. Police Story. There we go. But it's a fucking great film. Um, So... Jesse comes into the trailer, picks up the dolls. He finds a note that says, oh, thanks very much for doing this. It's, Here's all the money. Here's police story where it's him and he gets to get a bunch of the guys and they go off to someone or something. Him and a few other policemen. No, no. Oh, okay. It's, I, um, I it's a really complex story about uh, an undercover group of like guys that like use wires, wiretaps, and he's like the head of the organisation. And then... And then his girlfriend gets kidnapped as part of this, like, triad thing. And then at the end, no one believes him. And he gets framed for, like, loads of bad shit. And they think he's, like, a renegade cop who's 
going crazy. So he has to prove his innocence and rescue his girlfriend. Oh, it sounds complicated. And he ends up going to a shopping mall in the end and taking on like 30 bad guys <clears throat> doing these crazy badass Jackie Chan shit. It's insanely good film. Great storyline as well. Okay, I'll give it a go. <clears throat> really good. Uh, yeah, so he grabs the he grabs the dolls. Jesse grabs the dolls, grabs the address, grabs the money, and it's a cemetery he's got to go to to take the dolls there. But obviously, that's where the body is of of Charles e. Ray. So he just, he's going to drive them there. But he picks up Jade, his girlfriend, on the way, um, and he's talking to her. He's sort of saying to her, "Look, I got some advice from my neighbour the other day, which is I shouldn't take you for granted, and I should tell you I love you, and I don't want to take you for granted. In fact." Why don't we get married? Should we get married? And she's like, oh, my God. <laughs> I can't believe it. Meanwhile, get Chucky's... Get married. Okay. Meanwhile, Chucky's doing the wanker sign to them. Yeah. Yeah, I pretty... agree, Chucky. And Chucky's like, ah, oh, Jesus. But Tiffany's like, that's so romantic that they're doing that. It's yeah, because really she wants to get married. And then he says, nah, I give them six months. Yeah, uh, uh, free if she gets fat. <laughs> Is that what he says? <laughs> Yeah. What a bastard. Like, you know. <clears throat> John Ritter, he finds the van with the dolls inside. You keep saying it's John Ritter. Do you know him from something? Yeah, John Ritter, fucking insanely famous comedian who died. Uh, I don't know. Oh, my God, Gav. Please get to know John Ritter. He's so funny. You'll know him from loads of things. Okay. Really funny guy really funny well he finds the van anyway with the dolls inside and he's grossed out when he sees the dolls and he, he goes in the van and Chucky pulls out a knife and Tiff says no 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 no. let's kill him with something else so they get a jar of nails and they set up a booby trap which basically involves him uh, hearing a little giggle from Tiff and he goes over to there and they set something up where all the the, the nails fire into his face. Uh, uh, yeah, right. And, uh, how did he say? Oh, it's the airbag. But that's I, right, I don't airbag. know how they got a nail speed like that, but they did. So yeah, the and, airbag um, pushes him out. And Chucky says, it's pretty "Why cool. does that look so familiar?" And oh, cheeky! It's, it's a Hellraiser. But actually, Brad DeRiff re- uh, ad libbed that as well. Um, they weren't going to include that, but Brad DeRiff said, "Oh, I've got to say, why does that look so familiar?" Because obviously, it's Hellraiser, like you say. Then they hide him in a trunk in the back of the van. They clean up all the blood just in time for Jesse and Jay to come back, who don't know they've now got a dead body in their van full of nails. See, uh, obviously in editing, it's when you've got the choice when Brad Dourif goes and gives you another delivery and he puts like a little bit of that into it. Just having that choice turns the movie into a different thing. It could be a bit more of a cheeky uh, uh, meta-type film just with these little references. A bit more like Scream. And it's funny as well, because what's interesting is all these references to other classic slashers and horror icons. And then Ronnie Yu would go on to direct the ultimate crossover, Freddy vs. Jason, you know? Yeah, yeah. And people then wanted, you know, Chucky vs. Uh, Pinhead or Chucky vs. Leprechaun and things like that. So it is interesting. And we'll um, be getting to uh, Chucky, uh, no, Freddy vs. Jason uh, in a couple point, of years. In a couple of years' time, yeah. Yeah, not long. We'll get there. Yeah, it won't take long. Time goes by course, very quickly. Of course, Gav, this is 1998, so Chucky finds a big bag of weed in the back of the van as well. And he's like, score! He's very pleased with that. Yeah. Uh, the van gets pulled over yet again by another one of John Ritter's cronies. She punches him. She punches him. Um, meanwhile, Chucky's getting stoned in the back of the van. Good old Chucky. Do you think Chucky... Now, we've talked about this before. Chucky and Leprechaun. Give them a bong. Let them sit down. Hang out together. What would go on there? I would imagine they could start a podcast. I think those two in a movie together would be funny as fuck. Because imagine Warwick Davis making a little rhyme up and Chucky would just be laughing his head off about it and then they'd go off and kill someone. (laughs) You're a funny fucker. (laughs) It'd be really funny. Yeah. They'd be arguing over who was the tallest and stuff like that. You know, it'd be great. <laughs> uh, you must be Irish. You've got the red hair there, Chucky. I can imagine all the little things like that. It'd be really... They should do it. Ronnie, <laughs> you, come out of retirement. Do that. Make that. Make that. Yeah, so Chucky gets stoned. She punches a cop. Um, the cop searches the van. He almost finds the dead body, but he does find the weed. Um, 
and he says to them, right, you stay here. I'm going to go and radio this in. He gets back in his car. Meanwhile, Chucky gets the lighter off John Ritter and he sneaks over to the cop car, puts a rag in the petrol cap, lights it. Then he crawls back over again. Yeah, that's a bit the, odd. That, that stone guy sees him, doesn't he? That is, oh, man. And that guy, he put his, down, his name down as Park Bench. Who played that? Really? Yeah, that that stoner guy is so good. He plays it so well. Just going looks like, whoa! He, goes, he says, "Rude fucking doll." Well, because no, Chucky looks back at him, just gives him a finger, and carries on going. He's like, "Whoa, it's, whoa rude fucking doll." <laughs> he doesn't really question it. He's just like, "I'm having a great time in this car right now." Uh, Off my tits. Uh, yeah, I've never got high and seen fucking dolls and thought, "Yeah, that must be what's going on." <laughs> You don't know. Well, he's lit the rag in the petrol tank, got away, flipped off the guy, like we said, and he drops the lighter on the way, um, which they'll, the, the police find later on and link that to John Ritter. Um, but yes, suddenly the car explodes. Boom. Goodbye. He's dead. Um, and the other kids think it was Jess, Jade and Jesse that did it. So, so rather than sort of hang out and say, well, it wasn't us, they just speed off in their van. Yep, well, they off do. they go. Yeah, um, the effects are uh, pretty much Kevin Yeager did quite a lot of the effects. He's quite known for a lot of other movies. Quite good, renowned effects artist. Yeah, and they still weren't using much CGI. Um, no, no. They probably would have removed some wires and, and. No, I think Chucky looks really good in this. That's why I was surprised you thought in part three he looks the best, but I think he looks so good in this. I think he looks really good. But I think he looks good in the more. I think the use of. You know, seeing just feet or hands or and puppetry and animatronics in all of the movies really works so so well. Um, it's very clever. And again, if if you use something in small amounts and and you know less is always more, as we say, it just looks great. Looks great. Um, I hope Tom Holland always gets a a um, bit of a, a check in the old post. For every single movie that comes, comes out, out. Know, if yeah. it does, must do really because it is his, uh, his little origins brainchild. Um, so yes, they speed off and they do argue. Um, you know, should we be driving away from this? You know, what we're we going to do here? David calls them, their friend, and says, "Guys, have you seen the news? You are wanted for several murders, and also your uncle John Ritter is missing." He's so nonchalant the way he just sort of says this, their friend. Yeah, but You're, but hi it, guys, it's You're wanted for murder. Funny enough though, later on he goes, to, he gets in the car and van. And he's like, when they pick him up, he's like, uh, obviously I know you guys aren't do that. And then you look at him, you're like, yeah, it's pretty obvious these guys are not killers. You just got to look yeah. at them. They, so uh, on that point, I went, yeah, fair enough. That's why he's so nonchalant mm-hmm. about it. Cause he's like, you're obviously not killers. Because I was like, is this bad acting or bad directing? But no, it makes sense. Um, and he says to them, you two better lay low because you're wanted for you know a couple of murders. So they head to Niagara Falls as far away as they can. And they stop on the way there. They stop at a chapel. And they get married. It's not important. He, you look, it makes you look so much more guilty. He says to her, let's get married. He sort of pushes her in a way into it. She's not sure if she wants to do it. So they go in. Meanwhile, Tiffany says, I think we should use their bodies. We should move into their bodies because they're young. They're good looking and they make a cute couple. And Chucky's like, meh. But then he says to her, like, but why I'm really do you need the amulet? <laughs> I don't know. To get out of the body? I don't know. He didn't need the amulet with Tyler in the last one. No. He Chucky does apologise at this point. There's some more white zombie going on as well. Um, and he says, like, I'm really sorry about the way I treated you. You know, we were a good couple. We do have the same sense of humour. We both love killing people. You know, maybe we could make this work. Yeah, maybe we could take their bodies. Let's hop into their souls' holes. Let's do it. All of a sudden, while they're talking, John Ritter is still alive. Now, face man pops up. Pops up. Um, uh, he gets knifed up by Chucky, basically. Well, just before that, he trips over and falls on his own face, which oh, has yeah, already yeah. got loads of nails in it. It's not good, look. Owie. Yeah, and then uh, Chucky stabs him a hell of a lot in the back. Um, and we cut back to the wedding. You may now kiss the bride, they kiss. 
and they see some TV reports that say the police are on the trail of Jade and Jesse, the one who are wanted, you know, for uh, multiple murders. And this is while they're in their honeymoon suite. It's, it's so weird that this other couple are just there. Now they they're there for a foursome, aren't they? Uh, I guess so. But it's just like where they come from. But fuck off. Well, they're they're their own sort of story because they're criminals as well, and yeah, they yeah. They're, oh they're stealing off people, yeah. Yeah, and if they can't bone them, they steal them. They walk into their room like, oh, we didn't realise someone was in this room. Why are the like, doors well, not locked? How can they do that? You'd be like, get the fuck out then. They say to them, we're on a honeymoon. And yeah, they're like, if oh, I was on what? my honeymoon, be like, fuck off. Why are you watching TV on your honeymoon? There's better things you could be doing. And then the girl's like, yeah, I mean, you know what they say, the more the merrier, right, right? And they sort of lie on their bed for a bit. And um, Jesse's like, I barely boned this girl. I don't want to get involved in a foursome at this stage. Can you just get out of here, please? They see the dolls. They they go, oh, these are cute. What a cute honey. What a cute wedding um, gift you guys have got. This is cute. And then they, they eventually they leave. Steal some shit. Steal some shit. I think they take the ring. Yeah, and as well. some money. Um, and Tiffany sees this, so she goes, "I'm going to get the ring back from that stealing bitch." So they they they're in bed later on on a water bed, getting it on. I, a water bed that just looks so frustrating. You couldn't sleep in it. It was too uh, like rocky. How'd you bonk on it? Because it'd be like splosh, moose, splosh, moose. Yeah, you, you're not going to be able to really get any spring action going on. You need a good uh, firm base for some good pelvic but, thrusting. But, go. but with a bit of a bounce. A water bed no. is like... Welcome thwomp. to Gannett. Welcome to Dav, uh, Dan and Gav's sex tips here. Uh, you need a bit of a firm base to get a good bounce. But the water bed's just... You're going to... Oh, stay there. No, come away. Just, but, but it looks great on film when I it imagine, bursts open. I don't drink anymore, of course, but imagine being drunk on on that would be horrible. Oh, I'd be sick. Yeah. I'd be sick because... Yeah. You'd be sploshing around all over the place. Yeah. Ugh, disgusting. Um, and yes. very quickly, though, before that, that, you've got the man and woman who are next door and they're going to be killed. That's the bit we're talking about. Yeah, the man has got the dirtiest white socks and he wears them to bed. And it's like, oh, really oh, dirty. You can see him from the mirror face downwards. Don't judge a book by its... No, what am I saying? Don't judge a book by its cover. Don't, don't judge a pervert by his socks, Gav. Okay. But yeah, they're getting it on. And not only have they got an inflatable heart-shaped waterbed, they've also got a, a ceiling mirror. So they're really into, you know, some good times. Tiffany sneaks in their room. She wants to get the ring back and she knows that they're up to no good. They look up in the middle, middle of the bonk to the ceiling and they see this little grinning doll with a champagne bottle and she throws the bottle up it's, to the ceiling. It's a brilliant kill. It, it looks is a very excellent. Good kill. It smashes the glass. All the glass comes flying down and slices them to ribbons and then obviously bursts the waterbed and we get this kind of tsunami of blood and water fly all over the floor um, and they're pretty much... They're, they're dead. And that now Chucky has sex. Well, he looks at her because that was like... Like you said, it was such an incredible dramatic kill. He looks at her and he goes, I love you. And then he sort of gets down on one knee... And he puts the ring on her finger. He has to pull it off of the severed finger of the woman. And um, he says, will you marry me? She she starts crying. Then she says, hang on a minute. I'm I'm actually crying. I wonder if all the plumbing works. And he says, well, we are anatomically correct. And this is where he says, I'm starting to feel a little like Pinocchio over here myself. Um, and yes, now we get a dull sex scene, Gav. Yeah, weird. But it's only really done by shadow. And you see Chucky, they're in missionary position. You know, it's just a standard missionary. Chucky's humping away. And then uh, she says, well, wait, wait, wait. Don't come yet. Um, have you got protection? And he says, what do you mean? She goes, a rubber. And he says, a rubber? I'm made of rubber. <laughs> Luckily, you don't see the orgasm. Because I don't. Oh. I think Brad DeRiff in a studio doing ADR. Ah. Going, going eh, eh, yeah. But I just don't want him to have to... And he, maybe he did that. Maybe out there somewhere there's a tape of his voice doing that. I don't want to hear it. I love you, Brad, but no. But it's funny, and it's it's really all designed just to get to the joke of, what do you mean, do I need a rubber? I am rubber. 
It's funny. It works. It's silly. This film is all of those things. It works. It's silly. But we're having a lot of fun with it. Um, Jesse calls David. Um, He's panicked. He says, look, I've just got married. But I think... Sorry. uh, Yeah. But he says, I think Jade is a serial killer. Meanwhile, on the other line, Jade is also speaking to David, saying, I think Jesse is a serial killer. So they both think the other one is killing all these people. And it's quite clever and quite well written. Um, and he organizes this is where he organizes for them to meet up because he knows neither of them are the killer because yep. they're both so nice yeah, 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 they're yeah, both yeah, so yeah. panicked yeah, yeah. meanwhile Gav we get housekeeping 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 she comes in ah these newlyweds no oh, they're great she's laughing <laughs> look at what they get up to ah, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the sliced sees up the bed everywhere glass body parts yeah and they're the fuck out of there aren't they they're on the road yeah they're they're off basically they're, they're basically like the fucking is it the gecko brothers no the they are like the gecko brothers yeah destruction yeah. fucking those two are great weren't they mm. george clooney and quentin tarantino yeah really, it's just surprisingly what, what a weird pairing but great. i know yeah. <laughs> really good and and actually that surprisingly that george clooney was the psycho out of the two yeah. As well, you know. Well, Great. no, Tarantino's a complete and utter maniac. Yeah, but fuck me, his he brother is. The, is. No, he, no, he is the maniac. But yeah, but Clooney is an unhinged. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But, but you know, Tarantino's the maniac. He's the one that decides to kill people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so they drive off as soon as they can. They argue about who the killer is. This is where David says, "You're both wrong. It's neither of you." Da 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 da. Then David himself starts questioning whether they are the killer because he then goes in the back of the van and finds John Richard's body. Yeah, so he takes the gun out, like, what the fuck? He tries to keep it quiet, and it's quite a fun... I wish, actually, they'd have played on this for longer. Close-ups on his face of him yeah. going... Because imme- he immediately turns around and pulls the gun on them. I wanted uh, them no, she to drive back. She further. goes back to give him a cuddle, and he goes, stay away from me, but they, it was too forced. Why would she yeah. jump back in a van to cuddle him? She'd be like, yeah, thanks for that. All right, let's keep going. Um, and it's it must have been a way just to push it forward, but it's like they should really played on that, like him being paranoid. They could have kept that going for until they got to the cemetery or something. Well, he tells them to pull over, so they do. But the dolls also have guns at this point. Yeah, where did they get guns from? I, I can't remember where they no, got no, guns no. from, really. Hello, it's um, and then we get a bit of a, a bit of a crap CGI death here now, sadly. Um, not as good as the Final Destination hit. He steps no. in. Da- David steps out of the truck. It's very then, easy to do those in yeah. it. It's All not, we see is a CGI splatter as the truck hits at David. Yeah. Um, and uh, the dolls say to Jade and Jesse, drive, drive. So they do. But a cop car saw them all stood there with guns on the side of the road. So he's done a U-turn and he's now in pursuit of them. However, Chucky kicks the door open, waves the gun in the air whilst pulling on um, Jade's hair and shoots the car, tires out. The cop car goes off the side of the road and they lose them and they're off. Uh, and Chucky then explains everything to them. Well, uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, yes. He says to them, we want your bodies. Um, we're we're going to transfer our souls into your bodies and we're going to be able to start again. And the news report on the radio says, um, an interesting turn of events as uh, some fingerprints found at the scene of some of these murders have come out as Charles Lee Ray's fingerprints, the deceased serial killer from the 80s. So Chucky's fingerprints, actually, whoever you are, your soul is the fingerprints are on... That's what I mean. A bit, well, bit of a I'm just bit making of a, stuff up as we go. Bit of a logic flaw. Also, Gav, his fingers are tiny. They, they, surely they'd say Charles Lee Ray's childlike fingerprint or his DNA. It's weird. His DNA would be better, surely. But you know, it is what it is, and they're off to dig up his corpse uh, because the amulet's with his body, and that's what we're doing. Well, they, they know you need to get new wheels, don't they? A new RV. They do so they steal an old couple's motor home. they've cooked dinner they've killed them basically we see them dead in a cupboard they're, when they're cooking though they're, i love the fact these two work together provoking them to fight each other are you gonna Ima- take that that sort of stuff imagine a crossover though where they steal a motor home and it's it's actually harvey Keitel's motor home with his two children from dust to dawn in it yeah and they and they don't know that richie 
uh, and his brother, the Gecko brothers, are in the bathroom. That would be fun. You get these um, show up in a lot, don't you? Because there's there's also that Jason movie where they're they're shagging in a a motorhome as well. Yeah, they show up in a lot of horror movies. Yeah, these hills have eyes, all sorts. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Mm, it's good. It's, good. it's a good cheap location. And you're right. This is where Tiff bakes some brownies, and Jade and Jesse start basically creating an, an argument. Like her food sucks, or she hasn't done the dishes, or are you going to take that? And they end up having a big fight, um, at which ends with um, one of them kicking Tiffany into the oven and shutting the door, and Chucky flying out the window of the camper van, which then crashes, turns on its side, fuel starts leaking out of the camper van. It's all gone tits up. It's about to explode, but Tiffany bursts out of the oven. Yeah. She's all burnt, burnt and horrible looking. Um, Jesse manages to save Jade just as the van blows up. Uh, Tiffany tries to grab the gun and Jesse stops her by stepping on her little burnt arm. Um, and Ch- uh, Chucky makes Jade carry him off because he's got a gun on her. The so. graveyard, by the way, looks fantastic. Um, it's a good set. Yeah, there's a bit uh, just before you get to that, which I really liked where it just cut to a guy being killed and thrown into a hole. Uh, or, no, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he had just... B- it just been cohered into doing the whole by gunpoint or whatever. And I love the fact that you didn't see any of that. It was just actually him being killed and he'd already made the hole. Oh, no, he was making the hole because... So he was there to exhume the body because the police were saying they were going to exhume oh, the body. Oh, okay. I um, thought that was okay. really, really smart editing, actually. Yeah, you didn't really need to see it, did you? It was cool. Well, that's, what, just... you, well, that's what the idea is in editing. You, you should really... If someone's got to go from A to B, you don't generally see the car drive. That should be just be like A, B, you know, straight on. And I yeah. thought that was, was like kind of it, and they're just literally saying the, the audience is definitely intelligent enough that they've just killed the century man, but they obviously must have got him to come along at gunpoint to make the hole and I thought it was doing that and I thought it was very clever but I it will was, use it, that myself <laughs> it was still clever that um, we didn't need to really see the kill you know yeah it's yeah, just no, no, it's still, just, still nice yeah it's like breathing for Chucky and, and Tip they just kill everyone and it's cheaper to make you know? yeah. yeah didn't need to do it um, so Chucky finds his grave as we say that there, and he chucks Tiff in the grave yeah, he um, thinks Tiffany he does think Tiffany's gross when she comes back yeah, he says, ugh, you're disgusting. Yeah. Um, he makes um, Jade open the coffin, and there's a skeleton, his skeleton in there, and the amulet's around his neck, and he says, oh, I'm sorry, you didn't really need Which to see we this. we still don't need to know what it's for. It's the MacGuffin, go. It's the MacGuffin. She rips the amulet off, which breaks his head off, and he goes, ah, bitch, you broke my neck. Um, and then there's a standoff, and they end up swapping Jade for Tiff. Like you say, Chucky's disgusted by her because she's all burnt and horrible and she's really sad. Um, Chucky throws a knife at Jade, but it goes into Jesse's back. Uh, he's not dead, though. He ties them up together and he begins chanting. And this is where Tiff says she starts realising everything they're doing is wrong. She starts remembering the Bride of Frankenstein. And this is where she starts quoting it. She even says... We belong together. Uh, they kiss, but it's a trick because Tiff stabs Chucky. And then she says, and we belong dead, which is what Frankenstein says to the bride at the end of that movie. Yep. So he he then hits her with a shovel. And this is where we get that incredible forced perspective overhead shot of Tiffany and Chucky fighting. But it's actually two full-size actors and but the way they've shot it near a car and with the oversized props, it just looks great. Yeah. Um, he ends up stabbing Tiff. She seems to be dead. Uh, Jesse um, hits Chucky into the grave, and then out of the blue, this cop shows up. <laughs> yeah. He says, Where's that, "Where did this trustworthy detective come along? Because he he's just as bad as that other kid." But but the thing is, he shows up and he's found the two kids that are you know suspected of these murders then he looks down you've got Chucky in the grave stood there looking at him smiling and he thinks oh shit okay so this is actually happening then yeah um so Jade pulls a gun on Chucky the cop doesn't stop her no. and she says I'm going to kill you I'm gonna, and he says you can do what you like you can shoot me I always come back which he does yeah, but like this cop comes along and it's like right 
It's really like don't let this girl take a gun from you. You probably just generally don't do that anyway. And that proves a weird little doll is alive, and we could study this, make money off this, like, and it proves that none of you did this. But he's just like, yeah, obviously you didn't do it. There's a doll there. Okay, you go. You've All literally right. got proof of the afterlife and reincarnation here. Yeah, you go, and they shoot the doll. Obviously, she does, and he's just like, "Yeah, you give me, give me my gun back, right? Go on, you go home now." Well, he says to her, "You do that. No one's ever going to believe this, right?" But, so, you two are off the hook. Uh, well, he's just decided that. So when everyone else turns up and says, so "What happened?" He's gonna go, "See that doll? Yeah, well, that he killed radi- everybody." He radios it in afterwards. After they run off, he radios and says, "You, you, he you says guys need they're to come not over to the cemetery. They're he not ra- guilty." Yeah, but it's still, then- how can he? How can you explain this? Well, he says to them, you're not going to believe what, what I've got here. That doesn't ma- doesn't matter. He can prep them as much as you want in the fucking radio call. When they turn up, they could be like, what the fuck are you talking Why about? Why are you showing me a doll? Right, right. You can't use this doll, dead doll, as your killer. Where are the actual kids, which we've been following the whole time as trial of murder? I let them go. What do you mean you've let them go? They had a doll. It's just, he's getting fired. Well, he, after he's radioed this in, he walks along and then he sees Tiffany's corpse on the ground and he thinks, oh, God. Oh, I'm going to He pokes it. it, pokes it a couple of times, nothing happens. And then all of a sudden, she goes, ah! So this is such a horrible scene. I didn't like this scene. I was Blood's, happy with the end. Blood splats out from underneath her oh. dress. And a little, she's having a little doll baby. And it crawls out. It's quite a good effect, this baby, isn't That's it? It's horrible crawls out and the cop screams the baby jumps on his face and begins to kill him and that is cut to credits oh <laughs> ending on a horrible little doll baby it's really horrible it's quite disturbing it, it reminds me of the weird baby in a razor head as well yeah I still weird didn't slug I, baby. I still didn't watch it have I? It's a weird little slug baby right anyway well do you give that a thumbs up or thumbs down yeah I mean let's quickly I, um, I enjoyed that one yeah, it's a really fun one. I, It's a different film to the first three. It's like we said before, it's got that comedy element to it. It takes a different turn. But bringing Tiffany into it and, you know, 1998 with that music and the goth stuff. Do you think we're it, a more fun world then compared to the 80s? Hmm. In some ways. Different world, I yeah, guess. Yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting to look at three and four. It's only seven years apart, and they're very different in style, aren't they? Yeah. I'm still... Um, I, I don't know. I quite enjoyed this one. Now, does this go over number one for me? No, I think number one still for the moment. I still think number two is the weakest out of the four we've covered. Because um, it was just... It was good, but it wasn't awesome. I, I, I can't remember. Three's my favourite, followed by one then four, then two, out of the ones we've done. Mm. So, so three, one, four, two for me. There we go. But um, that was that was Charles Play 3 and 4. Yep. Uh, yes, a thumbs up for me, of course, uh, both both of them, um, which means when we when we get around to it next time, not, not the next episode, but when we get around to it, we'll be taking a look at possibly the weakest in the franchise, Seed of Chucky from 2004, which was... Uh, Again, uh, which was actually directed by Don Mancini as well as written. Uh, and we'll be pairing that up with the follow up Curse of Chucky, which again was directed by Don Mancini. He also directed the one after that, so he directed three Chucky films in a row. So, yeah, we'll be taking a look at Seed of Chucky and then Curse of Chucky. And then when we get around to it, the final part of the franchise will be Cult of Chucky, which I think you're a big fan of. Uh, is um, that one with Fiona DeRiff in the wheelchair? I believe so, yeah, yeah. yeah I, quite, uh, I quite enjoy that one, yeah. And we are, we are going to pair that one up with the 2019 Mark Howell-voiced remake, reboot. I've not Last seen night. it. Oh, interesting. But that'll be a while before we get to that. And there's a TV show. And I've got to say, Gab, I'm I'm enjoying going through this franchise a lot more than uh, going through the Leprechaun franchise. Oh, God, all the critters one. Yeah. Yeah, there is a TV show. Um, I haven't seen it. I might, I might have a, a little... Delge. Ganders. Have a little Ganders. Goosey goosey gander. I might slip into Chucky's first oh. episode. Are you going to transfer your soul into his hole? 
There's no hole transferring whatsoever. Right, Bill. No. He's not, not Bill. Even there. Bill. Shut the out of here. Bill's gone. <laughs> oh, we'll be back in a minute. Back again with Chucky. <laughs> Cooking with Chucky. No, i be making a right mess. This week we'll be looking at Swedish meatballs. Yeah. Well, there we go. That was Chance Play 3 and 4. Um, moving through the franchise. Interesting and fun to do this. I love coming back to these franchises that we're working our way through. But everybody is fed up now of listening to us talk about Chucky. And they're like, what's next, Dan? Are they, Gav? Are they? Shall I tell you what's next? Yeah. All right, so our next episode will be episode 152, and we are going to the master. It's a John Carpenter special. Oh, it is, isn't it? Yes, our fourth one in 10 years. Uh, we are, we picked one each. So the I've picked 1983's Christine to cover, and you have chosen 1995's In the Mouth of Madness. Which I haven't seen for a while, and I can't wait to and it'll be, give an excuse. And reviewing it will be, be lovely. And it'll be a lovely um, chance for us to gush over our favourite director, John Carpenter, as always. He's got another album coming out, number four. Oh, yes, I saw that. Lost yeah. Dreams, whatever. So, um... Yeah, we'll talk all about John Carpenter in the next episode, and we'll talk those two movies. After that, it's another patron. We still are unsure what we'll be covering. All we know is it's Jamie's episode. She hasn't got back to me yet, so I'm super excited to hear when she does. Um, and yeah, we, we it's a mystery. Can't tell you what it is. Even Jessica Fletcher can't solve it yet, but we'll get there. Um, so yeah, that will be that will be fun to find out what Jamie's picked for us, and then after that, Gav, mm-hmm. episode one hundred and fifty-four, it's my birthday episode. <sighs> Thank you. Is there a ghost here? <laughs> well, what have you chosen, Sarah? We are doing a double bill of of Dolph Lundgren movies. Okay. We are doing nineteen nineties Dark Angel. Okay also known in the US sometimes as I Come in Peace. I think I might have seen it once. It's where Dolph Lundgren plays a cop hunting down an alien who's tried to steal adrenaline from people's brains. So this alien's going around <laughs> murdering people because on his own planet, adren- human adrenaline is a, a drug. So this is going to be a good conversation. It's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Dolph Lundgren kicking ass Regardless in of how the movie is, the Do you not remember this at all? He's got little CDs that he uses as... as um, weapons and they fly all over the place slicing people's throats I forget films all the time I definitely forget I've got on this movie which I would have seen on Sky back in the day well we're pairing that up with the classic 1987 because it's my birthday Masters of the Universe oh yes so we're going to be checking out Dolph Lundgren in a loincloth we're going to be talking about uh, Billy um, what's his face playing the little Gwildor and you know it's probably about the third or fourth podcast I've been on now talking about this film um, <laughs> and you know I think me and Ricky Morgan did it on his show me and RJ McCready did it on his show have I done it with anyone else I may have done it with Gary Hill I'm not sure but this is the fourth time I'm talking about Masters of the Universe everybody so, knows I'm the He-Man guy so you're so, absolutely seasoned to do this yeah podcast so you're going to be schooling me with facts and shit you know it. I'll be telling you all about Dolph Lundgren. I'll leave you just... Yeah, I won't even look into it. I'll let you just flow. Um, but that's yeah. that's my birthday. Dolph Lundgren, double bill. Bit of He-Man, bit of Dolph. Exciting times, guys, coming up. So... That is, that is basically exciting times. This is the future of your 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 world right now, listeners. It, coming up soon. Soon, Dolph Lundgren soon. in a loincloth. Yeah, Dolph Lundgren double bill. That's excitement for you. Look forward to it. Well, you know, with Dolph Lundgren, there's there's only really three films that we can talk about that kind of fall under the umbrella of fantasy, horror, sci-fi. Dark Angel, yeah. Masters of the Universe, yeah. or or 
Universal Soldier because that's oh, technically yeah, yeah. about zombie soldiers coming back yeah, from Universal, the dead. When he wears the ears, necklace, yeah. I'm all yeah, yeah, ears. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Uh, we'll save that one for a Van Damme double bill, perhaps. Amazing. Because, you know, a bit of Van Damme. Anyway, talking of uh, housekeeping earlier, housekeeping, let's do some housekeeping and, uh, and then we'll say goodbye to everybody. Yep. <clears throat> Well, first of all, Gav, this is the second time we've been able to say this. Uh, we are a proud member. We fall under the umbrella of Deadbolt Media. Yeah, now, this yeah podcast. we do. Yeah. One of two that do. Um, and we're also a proud member of Legion Podcast Network, Yeah, um, which we have been for 10 years. Um, if you want to know more, you can go to legionpodcast.com. That's where you'll come find out all about us and all of our back uh, catalog and all the other shows that are on there and all of their episodes as I well. I think I'm uh, pretty sure the new Deadbolt website is getting, getting uh, designed, um, so we would probably be on there as well. But I'll let you know when yeah. that's live. That's deadboltfilms.com, everybody. Come back onto that in just a moment and remind you of that. Uh, we're on Facebook as well. If you go to Legion Podcast page on Facebook, you can join that. You can also join us on Facebook. It's just search for the, the podcast on Haunted Hill. That's where you can join our community. It's a 10-year-old community now. Everybody on there you know, is fun. Um, they, they share what they love, what they're watching, things they're looking forward to, traders, silly memes and gifts. And we all just chat absolute bollocks it's brilliant um and you can email me and gav at the podcast on haunted hill at outlook.com yep. if you have any questions or suggestions or anything else that rhymes with those two words i couldn't think of anything off the top of my head which is why i'm not a battle rapper anymore congestion there we go if you've got any congestion suggestions or questions In intentions <laughs> Imagine someone emailing me, Dan, I've got some congestion issues. <laughs> okay, well, I can recommend these thro throat sweets. <laughs> no, I I've got I've got junction problems. What? Like, out of my road. There's oh, some congestion is in... Right, okay. Yeah. I wondered what you meant then, junction. Um, we, wherever, you, wherever you're listening to this... Could have meant anything, couldn't it? Wherever you're listening to us now is where, where you can always continue to listen to us for now. Uh, but we are on Spotify, YouTube, Podknife, Apple, and many, many other podcast platforms. Uh, we're on uh, Instagram. Just go to the uh, Podcast on Haunted Hill Insta. We use uh, Instagram to promote episodes with little collages and links to episodes. So if you're on there, it's fun. You can see some cool artwork. I always try and pick cool posters, alternative posters if possible. Um, we mentioned Deadbolt Films. Deadboltfilms.com is uh, the website for our production company. Uh, we're now called Deadbolt Media. Um, we have a, a YouTube channel, which is Deadbolt Films on uh, just YouTube. Just easily search for that. And we're on Instagram there as Deadbolt Films. Hmm. We're also a patron. Uh, so we, we include patron supporters. Yes, so thank you always as much as possible. Yes. Um, if you do want to become a patron, just go to Patreon. Search for the podcast on Haunted Hill. If you can't find it, just message me on either Facebook or email us again, a podcast on Haunted Hill at Outlook.com. Um, for as little as a pound or a dollar a month, you can become a patron um, or as much as you'd like. But essentially, if you do that, you will get a free T-shirt posted wherever you are in the world in one of three colours in a size of your choice. You also get to uh, have access to all of our back catalogue, which we're releasing every Friday, one at a time, uh, on Freaky Friday, and as well as any other bonus um, episodes or videos that we put up that's exclusive only to patrons. Yeah. You also really excitingly get to be a patron and have a patron pick so you get to do the programming for one of our episodes every three episodes one of our patrons takes the reins tells us what to review pairs up two films tells us a little bit about their history with that film why they love it etc etc uh so um, you get to wear the crown the invisible crown for that whole episode so yeah, exciting and, time and as a patron dan can you then just go on to any of our episodes of the podcast you could just scroll down and yeah, I believe so. Once you become a patron, you can go back to anything we've ever put up through Patreon. So that's good because our, our earliest episodes, which I'm not advising people to listen to, but um, um, the earliest episodes, if you wanted to check them out, you can do because they're quite hard to find some of them. They are. Some of them have vanished from some podcast yeah. platforms. But um, 
I believe this week I'll be putting up episode 122. Um, so, yeah, you've got all of those episodes available if you become a patron yeah. to go back and listen to uh, at your leisure and, and you know, re- repeat them it, or, or not. It's just good to know that all those episodes are always there. You know? Yeah, because obviously we have the episodes ourselves saved, but, yeah, sometimes they vanish from places or, or you know, some websites. You can only put, put a certain amount of hours or episodes on there, yeah. weirdly. But yeah, so you also get your name read out and thanked at the end of each episode. And we do thank you very much, as Dan, yes. will, Dan will let you know. Uh, so I will now say everybody, I'm not going to really do a silly voice, I'm just going to say everybody's just, uh, normal yeah, voices. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So thank you individually to each of you. So thank you, first of all, to D. Thank you. Thank you to Don. Thank you. Thank you to Matthew. Thank you. Thank you to Jamie. Thank you. Thank you to Kevin. Thank you so much. Thank you to Sarah. Thank you so much. Thank you to Rachel. Thank you, Connie. Thank you to RJ. Thank you. And thank you to Lex, a.k.a. Holly. Thank you so much, guys. We massively appreciate it, honestly. We really, really yeah. do. And, you know, you may wonder where that money goes if anybody does support us. It, what it does is it helps us to find obscure films that you might have to sometimes buy or rent, sometimes physically. We have to buy films on disc. Um, it also helps to replace equipment and just essentially keep the show ticking over, really. Um, it also helps us when we're about to podcast to know, like, oh, I've got podcasts. Like, oh, it's cool. It's, it's not work um, as such, but you know having that little bit come in it just makes it so like uh it's more than just the hobby do you know what i mean it makes us feel a little bit more special it's a bigger thing yeah. than, than it originally was and it's like oh well, that's it, amazing so we we take it very seriously still because we have a lot of supporters but but also we have some supporters like the patrons that really want yeah, to support which really us, listen know. to it and it makes us yeah. feel special so it makes yeah, us it do does. a better job at recording yeah Hopefully, hopefully so. We we love you guys, but we love all of you listeners and supporters and everybody on Facebook. And thank you all for for joining us for yeah, every episode. You. Yeah, everybody, um, thank you for listening. Yeah, always good. And thank you, Gav. And thank you to Jennifer Tilly in the bathtub watching Murder She Wrote. <laughs> <laughs> thank <laughs> you to Jessica Lansbury and good night to for Jessica Lansbury. Ange- Angela Lansbury. Who's Jessica Lansbury? There isn't one. There's Jessica Fletcher, her character. Ah, Gavi's brain confusing. But thank you to Angela Lansbury. Is this our good uh, nights, is it? It is our good nights. Uh, it's a good night from um, John Ritter with a face full of nails, I guess. I guess so. What if it's John Ritter with a face full of critter? John Ritter's face full of critters. Eating some pineapple fritters. Do what I did watch recently, and that's a good buy. <laughs> Going back to the beginning of the episode, I did watch recently um, Raw Head Rex. Oh, yeah. That's, that's all. That, that costume's weird. It's I big and robbery. Really, I never really liked that film. I, did, I, I, I really quite enjoyed it. Anyway, we're not getting into that now. Good night, well, everybody. Well, good night from Raw Head Rex. Good night from Raw Head Rex. Why not? Why not? See you later. Good night, everybody. Stay safe. Look under the windows. Look under the beds. And look under the chuckies. Check out for chuckies coming. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon. <laughs>